Yeah, man. It hurts me to see something like this going on, especially between two brothers. Mike Epps is a legend in the game, and so is Shannon Shaw. But to see them fighting and bickering over comedy is disgusting. And it seemed like it's only gonna get worse. Monique did her thing on Club Shay Shay. I got the best two hours of sleep in my life. Damn. The Monique guards ain't like nothing I just said right now. Did y'all hear that? That's Negro here nor there. Let's get into this news, man. Mike Epps to Shannon Shaw said, let me clarify. But also, I ain't scared of Shay Shay. So they apologizing to each other. They winking and blowing kisses. And not only that, they plan on having a man and man sit down real soon. Mike Epps acting like he gonna have to sit on Shannon Sharp lap or something. Why he scared of Unk? He talking about how his clothes was gripping his body and he don't want Mike Epps. How he don't want Shannon Sharp looking at his testicles and all that. What Mike Epps got to hide? Everybody else went up to the show with no problem, but he throwing a fit. Like he knows something that the other people out there probably don't know. But the truth of the matter is, is allegations and speculations that something went down between Shannon Sharp and Shay Shay after they did that interview. Oh and you may have not have heard this type of news, but uh, Shannon Sharp got all different types of allegations about them. We about to talk about it, but before we do that, I need y'all to do me a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification button because I got so much love for y'all, man. And for the people watching the video, let me let y'all know right now. I really, really do appreciate every last one of y'all. And I want to thank y'all personally for watching the channel. Yo, Reg, get that set up. Open up the phone lines too, because we need some phone calls. People need to call in to answer this question because a lot of people taking up for Shannon Shaw and they feel like Mike Epps was dead wrong. So y'all gonna have to let me know how y'all feel about it. Yo, show them some love real quick. Yo, who we got up in here? We got QS, what it do, baby? Long time no see. Tierra Williams, cryptic, King Trey is gay. One of Shannon Shaw homies in the building. We got Elena Donna. French Gerald, MC Lunch Money, Lisa Sammy, Tierra Williams, what it do, my? Kane Grains, what it do, bruh? Brian M and the whole family in here. Now let's get back to this news right fast. Cause these men acting like they afraid to be around each other. And so what if Shannon Shaw possessed you? That shouldn't stop nobody from going up there and getting their money. But they saying that Mike Epps acting like he got some secrets of his own because ain't nobody else call him out like this in public except for him. Listen at this, y'all. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I know Shay Shay, I don't know what grown ass man got a name named Shay Shay, but I know this grown man is not mad at me. So many people talk crazy about you. They was on Saturday Night Live talking about you, imitating you, but now you want to fight me? Now, I'm not going to lie. I did DM you to get on the show. But I DM'd you to get on the show because you brought my name up when you were sitting there with Cat, and you was trying to get him to talk crazy about me, but he didn't. Okay? Now... Second of all, talking about pulling up on me. You're going to be an all-star. I'm going to be at the all-star in my hometown. <clears throat> and I'm going to see you. Look at all them grays in his bed, y'all. Try to count them. Oh, my goodness. Try to count all them grays in his bed and his mustache. Shannon Sharp, he 50-something years old, talking about he about to pull up on somebody. In his wheelchair, yeah. Oh my it's so confusing to me that these black celebrities be beefing until they old and gray. Somebody help me understand it. How Monique got grandkids beefing with an old Oprah Winfrey. Then you turn around and have Mike Epps, who's doing amazing things out there in the world. I'm talking about he bought up his whole community. 
He's an inspiration to young people and old people alike. We all love Mike Epps. But the truth of the matter is, some allegedly zesty is going on here. Cat Williams went up there. Cat Williams went up there and he was sitting on the edge of his seat throughout the whole interview. And people thought that was suspect the way Shay Shay was linked back looking down at Cat Williams balls. Oh Hold on, we got some phone calls. Yo, Rez, yo, open them, um, answer that phone real quick. Yo, hello, hello, who this is, man? What's the word, what's the word, Blake? What's going on, bro? I'm over here confused. You got these OGs in the game beefing left and right. What's that all about, bro? I mean, I, I think it, I think a little bit of jealousy on uh, Mike Hell's part, but not too much jealousy, but he, he's feeling some type of way, you know, so he about to be on the lookout when uh, I'm trying to see him at that All-Star game, you know? Real talk, man. You figure it'd be the young boys out there wild and shooting and acting dumb. But nowadays, you got to look out for them OGs toting hammers. Yeah. Hey, Shaddy told that boy he tried to talk with his feel. He, he ready to go to work like he late, you know? <laughs> Already, man. And I'm so confused about this. A lot of people is speculating about Shannon Sharp's sexuality, even though he was on first take. No, not first take, undisputed for a very long time. Right, and he right. was the same dude, same mannerisms, but nobody really questioned him like that. Why you think everybody at his throat right now? Because they hating on the man. man. Anytime you win it, this man done got over like 60-some million views in the last month or two. So mm. all the other people, they they like, man, I, I don't like him doing them type of numbers. Like like Stephen A. Mm -hmm. he, he one of the biggest haters, man. I... I I'm like, why wow, y'all should be congratulating another black man that, you know what I'm saying? That, and then, like Shiny said, man, his video with Cat, all the YouTubers ate. So why is everybody mad at him? We sure did. I had a big ass plate off that Cat interview he did, already, man. I'm already knowing you ate off good off that. So, you know, he, he bringing money to the platform. I don't know why they mad at Shannon. I'm not, actually, I'm not mad at him. I like what he's doing. Mike Epps, I'm not mad at Mike either, but don't, like you say, don't lie on the man. He could have, but when I first heard Mike Epps say the joke, I thought it was a joke. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking he's joking with it. But then when Shannon did his little response, and then Mike Epps had to double back and say, oh, yeah, I did DM you. You know, so I don't know what's going on with him, man. I know it's going to be some stuff at that All-Star game. And you I'm right what? here next to it. Yeah. You know what it is, bro? People don't respect the fact that he went the zesty route. Can you imagine if Charles Barkley sat on the couch with Monique going at Oprah Winfrey <laughs> with extra lip gloss on his mouth? They would have dragged hey. Charles Barkley through the mud. <laughs> it's true. You hey, know, you know they what I really think? What's you up? know what I really think, Shannon, man, that man, you know, I think he, I think his pride is in the way because, you know, when Mike Epps went up on that stage, you know, he, he got a big audience. Everybody heard the joke on Shannon. So when he told him he looked like Medea's sister with a wig on, I think he feeling some type of way about that, man. I would. <laughs> yeah, man. And that's unexpected. When you get your fame and people showing you love, you figure it's going to be a smooth ride. But he getting bumps all in the road because Shay Shay acting like he the king of comedy because he got comics coming up to his show. And a lot of people yeah. don't like the way... He lined up them comedians. First, you have Steve, Cedric. You just lining them up. So he when Cat come, them up nicely. he lined their ass up like he a football <laughs> coach or something. Hey, he did play on the defensive line. I mean, he did play on the line. They said he the best tight end of all times. Don't that sound zesty? <laughs> oh my yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got a Gator. And it's on like it's on like eighty five percent with Shay. Cause first of first of all, ain't no grown man gonna call himself Shay Shay. I, I mean that just don't fit right for no man. I can't see no man. Be, hey, hey, Shay Shay, come here, Shay Shay. No, I can't. I can't even call the man Shay Shay. I call him Shannon. Yeah, man, I can't even imagine calling him Shay Shay to his face. But due to the times that we living in, do it even really make a big difference if he call himself Shay Shay or his name Shannon as it is? So what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, they need days and times. You, you can definitely name yourself whatever you want to. We, we in the age of weirdness now, man. Definitely, man. So with him doing these podcasts and he got a trainer and that's zesty, then he got a dude that be styling him. 
He's zesty, so it's like and what, damn. And, and who is this? Who is the sidekick? That Ocho dude? That's his. That's his. That's his. That's his boot thing or something. That's his boot thing. I hope not, cause I thought Ocho was a stand up dude, but uh. Hey, they all football players. They chase each other around all day with tight tights on, looking for yeah. the balls. Oh looking yeah, for the balls. My girl gonna tell me yesterday the Super Bowl. No, I ain't, you ain't watch that girl. I ain't watching no no men in no tight pants bending over, yelling blue forty two. No, that ain't for me. That's what they be doing all day, man. I don't even know who played. I don't even know who won. Can you give me an update? You I promise you I don't. I swear, Shannon, I don't know. I mean, I called you Shannon. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. I swear, Blaze, I don't know who won. Like you said, I don't need, I, all I know is Kansas Chief. I heard on through my Facebook, Kansas Chief. Well, I don't even know who they played. I don't have a clue. I asked somebody the other day, who playing? He ain't even know who was playing. I think it's a dying sport at the end of the day. Yeah, it definitely is. I don't get down with the. That's probably why. Uh, did he retire out of there? Because I know he in the Hall of Fame. Did Shannon retire or what? Yeah, he in the Hall of Fame and everything. So he a football player with Football Connects doing zesty videos. So that should let you know that football is basically dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He left that to go over here to do the best. <laughs> Yo, what you think brothers going to do when they cut all that football and all that basketball shit out? What you think the next lane going to be for brothers to go? Hip hop already dead. Rap done. Yeah, hip hop. So and without they gonna sports. They're going to have to go back to uh, masonry. They're going to have to go back to laying, laying roofs and carpentry, carpentry and stuff. You know that? Yo, Poppy yeah, got that shit sold up. Poppy got the game sold up, oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do got that brick laying and all that stuff sold up, don't they, man? They coming from across that border with all type of skills. And they do all types of shit, and it be fast. They put up a whole Dunkin' Donuts in a half a day and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There ain't no black man for not work no Mexican. That, that's them facts there, man. So what yeah, we, we going to do, bro? Work, yeah. they, yeah. they shutting down. Look. Basketball ain't generating that much money to be paying them no two hundred and something million. Football ain't yeah. doing the same neither. So when this is all said and done, what is gonna be the black man's cream of the crop, man? It might be comedy. But they might have to everybody just might have to start cracking jokes to make a dollar and just make everybody feel good. That's what they doing, though. All these TikTok, Instagrams, people acting goofy with their yeah. eyes bucking out their head, man. Make it, make them some short reels, put them on their Instagram. See if, yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to have to do something. Damn, everybody going to be a clown by the year 2030. Yeah. That's some sad but, stuff, I man. mean, but, uh, but as a, overall, as a black race, I really do hate that we, we I mean, I ain't going to lie. I do, like the, I do like the drama that these comedians and Shiny kicking up. You know, I ain't going to I'm about to say I wish we all come together and get along. No, I don't. I like this little, you know, it's entertainment to me. You know, I just really do. I don't want nobody to get hurt at the end of the day. But I would like to see Mike Epps and, and Shannon, you know, square up, though, you know. But Mike Epps said he ain't doing none of that. He, he said, bring your, your, your brain, brain, your, you know, he, he, laying, he laying somebody down. Yeah, he said he ain't about to be playing none of them games. But I can't see Mike Epps squaring up with Shay Shay. You remember when he was running from Baby D? <laughs> yeah. Getting chased around the car, he had to give her ass a cookie just to leave his ass alone, man. Yeah, yo, y'all just watching her blow up my car, man. She threw, they threw what a brick through his window and everything. <laughs> he don't want no smoke with Shay Shay, yeah. man. But on the real, we appreciate your phone call, bro. And that's why the next time, no doubt, man, we go live. Make sure you call back, homie. We gonna holla at you later. Real talk, no What's doubt, up? no doubt. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Damn, shit. I should have stayed on the phone with the other dude. But that's Negro here, nor there, man. Shannon ain't did nothing wrong. He do what a lot of brothers out here doing. Girly gossiping and spilling tea, man. But the thing is, he taking food out of Tasha K mouth and a whole bunch of other female bloggers out there. How you going to sit on her throne and not expect for people to call you zesty, man? L listen at this. All right. I'm going to see you, brother. And I'm just letting you know. I don't be doing no fighting lately. I don't do no fighting. So, 
You know, it's only other one other option. If you don't fight, you do blank. Hold on, Shannon don't want none of that smoke now that I think about it. Indiana is Mike's town, man. He, he, they gonna ride for Mike in Indiana. And since that's where the all-star game gonna be, let Shannon come through there tripping. They gonna take Shay and Shay and rip them niggas apart. No wonder Mike is so comfortable. He doing this man a favor. Like, look, we need to sit down and talk this out. And just like that, there will be no Naptown beat down during the All-Star weekend from either Mike Epps or Shannon Sharp's camps. Look, Shannon camp. All of them going to split their pants if Gary Indiana got on their ass, man. The club Shay Shay host is issuing an apology for the escalating the situation and promises a man to man sit down with this dude. He don't want that smoke. Blank, 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 blank. And Ocho, you shut up and go get some eyebrows. You looking like a whole milk dud sitting there oh agitating. We watched the white boy kick your ass on TV. So you shut up. And Shay Shay, you did look like Medea sitting there. You was looking zesty. I'm not saying you gay, but you was looking zesty. You look like Big Frida sitting there. You need to take them tight ass shirts off with the muscles. And that's it. <laughs> Go check out my special February the 20th. Hold on, y'all. We got another phone call. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? What's up? What's up? Uh, Hello. Hi. I'm from Rockland County. Oh, I'm man. watching her live right now. That's what's up. We so glad you called in. What's on your mind tonight? Um, I just want to say, I think it's... Yeah, we got another phone call. Yo, hello, hello. Come on, man. What part of the game is this, man? Now, you know we could hear that in the background. Why don't you just cut that off? You know what, Ma? We appreciate your phone call, but that don't even make no sense for real, man. Thank her so much for calling. We ain't going to be able to do that, man. Why, why she call up here with that stuff all out in the back like that? Look, when y'all call up here, just do me a favor and cut the TV or whatever it is off in the background. Now, I appreciate you for watching, but it ain't doing me no favors with all that stuff blaring in the background. Okay, Reg, go ahead, play that. On Netflix, February 20th on Netflix, it's called I'm Ready to Sell Out. Because being a real dude ain't making no money right now. Hold on, so Mike got a Netflix special coming up. And hold on, wait, 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 get that together. So Mike got a Netflix special coming up and he don't want to go sit on Shay Shay? Shit, he could have called him Zesty to his face and went viral. Oh my goodness. He could have saved all that smoke for the interview, man. It would have boosted that Netflix special. Why, why, he, why he being catty, man? Look at this. Matter of fact, go on and play that. That nigga Shannon Sharp called me trying to do an interview. I said, no, Medea, I ain't doing no interview. So you can sit across from me and look at my balls. I'm sitting down, nigga. I thought he was going to attack cat, that nigga there. The nigga shit is called Shay Shay. The nigga's telling you. Damn, he got a lot of animosity in his voice. This sound personal. What got Mike and his feelings so hard? And he's supposed to be a comedian. I knew something was up when he came out and said that um Cat Williams had on a fake Fendi. Hold on. He been hating. Boy, what is he mad about? Y'all need to help me understand. He said Cat Williams' Finney jacket from Shay Shay interview was fake. Now, what will possess him to say something like that? Is he jealous, maybe? Mike Epps also said Williams could have mentioned him during Club Shay Shay as he needs to press. Yo, I'm at a loss for words right now. I'm trying to make sense. I'm trying to compute all of this and see 
what is Mike Epps angle with all of this, but um, it's a possibility. I, hey, I really don't know. Maybe y'all need to call in and let me know what y'all think about this whole situation. Because if they all get money, they all celebrities and Shannon got this big old platform. Why wouldn't he want to come and use it to help this man's sexuality as long as he ain't getting at you like that? Is he offended at the fact that Shay Shay is zesty? I'm pretty sure it's a lot of zesty people that write his checks and I ain't saying he should go work with this man, but to be disrespecting him in the public so much so to where they getting ready to fight is baffling to me. Yo, Reg, run it, run that back. Y'all need to listen at this because Shannon was in his feelings. I'm going to put this out there uh -huh. and this one, I'm going to fire this shot over your head, mofo, and you will know exactly who I'm talking about. Yeah. Mention my, na mention my name again. Yeah. And I'm going to put the DMs. I'm gonna put I'm and I don't like doing this. Yeah. But you're lying. See, and yeah. I don't care about all that other stuff. You can say I'm gay and you can say I'm I don't care about that. Because yeah. I won't chase a lot, but yeah. I won't let you lie on my name. See, you ain't gotta worry about all this with football. You should have kept it G. Now you in a whole nother arena, and this is gonna be happening. He he might as well get ready for the gauntlet, because they coming for his head, man. And Mike ain't going to be the only, he the first one to come out and say how he really feel about this dude. Now you dealing with comedians. I know Corey Holcomb probably already had an earful to say about it. Hold on, y'all. Let me look this up real quick. Because I'm, I'm sure Corey don't spoke about this situation. Because these comedians on the attack. Hold on, get that together, bro. Hey, babe. Y'all stay tuned while I get this together for y'all, man. And I hope y'all enjoying yourselves out there. It's seeming like black on black is the best thing selling right now. Listen. Everybody said the Cat Williams video. I mean, it was a lot of people talking about the Cat Williams video was bad news. Motherfucker getting bold now. Motherfucker ain't yuck yucking with y'all. Only one yuck yucking is Shay Shay. Shay Shay. Oh, Taylor Swift running circles around uh, Beyonce. Where that come from? Why you had to say that? Your boss made you say that, didn't he? Oh, that's disappointing. I didn't know he said that. Your boss. Like <laughs> B-O-T-H-S. Both. Made you say that. You used to oh, speak Oh, it's a rap. They about, to, shit, they about to air this dude all the way out, y'all. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? What's up, bro? What's going on? This is Cat from Boogie Down, one of Brooklyn, 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 the house. No doubt. We got Brooklyn in the building, man. I'm over here baffled. It seems like every black celebrity is looking to hop into some type of beef. Is that the only currency that's going on out here in black Hollywood? No, what's going on? Mike my, my is jealous. Janet got 58 million views. Mm. I come with the pro. You're 58 million. Cat Williams spoke the truth. So when a black man can stop saying that, oh, it's black on black. It's just jealousy in black people. If yo, if you got 58 views on your broadcast, they're coming after you too. They said Sean doing this, Sean doing that, Sean doing that, and you ain't wasn't doing nothing. So it's the um the fame that got people going crazy like that. It's the success that's taking the shot at Shannon. Nah, you got it. Shannon's a good brother. He just, he just told people, speak your truth. He, he just speak your truth. And they just mad because he's a black man. He got his own liquor label. He's not controlled by, this, by the, F, the football player people. He's doing his own thing. He's telling black people to tell, be your free cat. When you say, I have a space because I got to feel free to talk. When that, when that Willie D thing going on, well, it, that was a horrible interview. All his jealousy. Uh, uh, Mike Evans is corny. He know he's jealous. He just said himself. He just lied. He just lied. He never did him. And Shannon saying he just lied. He just exposed himself. He just lied. I hear what you're saying, bro. But they could easily call Shannon Sharp a snake. Let me explain to y'all, man. He called the play and made sure. Last year, Shay Shay was all friendly. It was no drama. When Steve Harvey went up there, it was no drama. It was so comfortable. 
Cedric the Entertainer came up there. Everybody came up there to have a sensible conversation with this man with no beef involved. As soon as 2024 hit, this man started dishing out the tea on previous guests on his show. Now that is shady. No, no, ain't no shady. Now, how would you feel your wife, you poor, you struggle, your wife hold you down, Cat Williams pose them. I'm saying he's shady. You, Steve Harvey, you know what people saw my Steve Harvey? Don't talk to me. Uh, that, he's, he's very nasty to his worker. That's number one. They they got all the poop they were spilling, Joe. You know what's going on. You're trying to, I don't know what you're taking up for uh, uh, Steve Harvey, whatever. Or Steve Harvey been rugged down and in such an entertainment. What do you do? What entertainment? He can't dance. He can't joke. How is the entertainment? Man, he'd been entertaining people enough to make millions out there in Hollywood. He got a star in the world. Well, those are those to the other side of the people. Those are white people comment. Those are not black people comment. He's come on. He's corny. He I watched the Dark Matter with with Cat Wayne. It's good. It's really good. And you gonna tell me Mike Epps is funny? Yo, Mike Epps is hilarious, bro. You, you making it seem you, like I can, tell, I can tell you the type of person that you watch the Pasha family and, and, and all the family, right? You make it seem like Cat Williams the only funny comedian out there. No, I ain't saying only comedian. I never say that he's not the only comedian out there. There's more out there. He put people on. Did Steve Ali put people on? Did Mike F put people on? Yeah, I mean Steve Harvey put on said, didn't he? Oh, corny said, but wait till the Bernie Mac. So you Cat Williams part two. That's what you're trying to do out here in these streets. So I know part two. We keep it real. What did Steve Harvey did to his wife and to the other people that work for him that he treats working like crap? It was Steve Harvey too. I'm pretty sure Cat Williams slapped a couple of bitches in his day. Now, if he was, it would have been out where the proof and the receipt. So already out there, but people don't want to hear that because it's the year of the cat. No, I ain't no year the cat. If I show the receipt, somebody could say I smack a woman. Show the receipt. No problem. Where's the receipt at? That went where the receipt would have been out. Now you say Mike Epp, Mike Epp is funny. Not only he was funny on Friday. Not only was he allegedly beating on women, but he was also beating on kids. Oh my goodness. What you gotta say about that? Where, your favorite comedian. Where's the receipt at? Your favorite where's comedian. At? Your favorite comedian got in a fight with a twelve year old and lost. No, no, that was a setup because they black boys. All the setup, all the setup. Black boys. So, That's Hollywood. That's so, all the setup in Hollywood. Where's the receipt at? So that boy was Kodak Black acting. That's who, what you're trying to convince the people. I don't know. That was a setup to destroy him. He's a black boy. And if I speak against the industry, it's up. Like Cat Williams say, the order get higher. The order get higher. You got to go to the top. You think that Jay-Z ain't got higher? Jay-Z, I live in Brooklyn. What did Jay-Z do for Marcy Project? Hey, man, Jay-Z is an inspiration to a lot of people, man. Well, they figure if he could make it. He got informant. Jay-Z, how Jay-Z inspiration. And Jay-Z had a, Jay-Z and Damon Dallas were about to do a black deal. Jay-Z got an informant working with the FBI. A lot of people working with rats, whether they know it or not. But he's trying to say, he trying to, Jay-Z, he's trying to say, Jay-Z sat right there and sat right there. And Jay-Z ain't did nothing for the black community. What did he do? And what did he do? Like, like he said, Kanye West said, I didn't kill my mom. And he kind of went to say, these people stole their soul to the devil. Well, what did Cat Williams do for the black community? Since no, that's your man's and all that. Since that's your man's. Like what? He did what? a lot of things in the black community. He helped a lot of coming out, get back on the feet. He tucked up adopted children and everything. What did Jay-Z? And Blue is not Jay-Z child. Damn. Oh you going to go at Blue over Cat Williams? I'm not going to blue. Where where the answer is pregnant at? Where the pregnancy pictures at? Hey man, we just never know. These celebrities, they rich, they famous, they got dough. And no, but they don't got God. They don't got God. If you don't got God, what's wrong with you? They don't got God. Don't think rich is famous. You don't got God. If you don't got God, like 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 I told you before, they could be rich or famous. You don't got God, you're going to hell. Going straight to hell, huh? Like I said before. That the industry is wicked. Like, hear what Kanye West say? Kanye West said, I sacrificed my mom for this. 
and 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 and, 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 and what's the name? Michael Jordan. My, them, them guys that, that Michael Jordan, that was father, them guys ain't killed the father. Jordan had a gambling problem. You already know what's going on. That's the least. So all they get to the top, you take like Cat Williams said, you gotta be you gotta be boom, boom, boom your booty over. So you feel like everybody calling Shannon Sharp zesty. You got comedians that wouldn't even want to go on his show because they not feeling his flavor. But Cat not only sat on his couch, but also drunk him a tall glass of shea. Oh my goodness. Well, I talk to I drink a tall and I keep it real. When like I said, the devil is working. Like Cat was saying, real recognize real. That's why when you speak to you, it, it's a, a devil. No, it's a spiritual warfare. Good against evil, brother. Good against evil. And you know, people in Hollywood, they've been doing dirt, been shady, been Hollywood, grindy. Hollywood, not Hollywood, Hollywood. Yeah, it's, how, it's weird out there, man. Them people, they do all different types of stuff. I did also catch the STD. I also catch the STD. Herbie, that's a gay man disease. Damn, man. Yo. You just never know out here, man. All you could do is stay prayed up because Shannon got a lot of explaining to do and so do Mike Epps and Cat Williams. Ain't nobody innocent. I like Shannon was saying, I got the receipt. He just, Mike Epps did say, he never called them. He just met him. He never called them. Yeah. Mike said um, that he called up Shannon. So, you know, he was trying to get on the show. So what's that all about? That he just lied. He just lied. He just say. Shannon had called them. See that that's how you know it's a whole bunch of foolishness going on. That fifty something million me, views. Like, like Shannon saying, I'm gonna make my money. I got that check, YouTube check. That's all about. When that check look good, I can't what he say. I don't care what you say about me. When I get my money, that's it. That's it. Once he get that he bread. Call me gay, call me one to one club, but don't like I say, don't destroy my name. That's my part. Call you on the call. Don't drop my name. Shannon said, I got my YouTube check. That's all it counts. Call me on the call. But don't tell me you lie and say, I call you. I call you. But he just admitted He called him. That's exactly what he did, man. And now that they got everything straightened out, hopefully they could get on the Shay Shay together and have a conversation. But one thing for sure, brother, we appreciate your phone call. And that's why we don't want you to be no stranger, man. And make sure you call back the next time we go say, live. I love your show. Oh, you man, keep no doubt. doing your thing. If you get hired, they'll come after you too. Oh, man, yo, that's how it be, man. And I appreciate the love. And we definitely going to holler at you later, my dude. Real talk, man. Yo, shout out to him. Or his phone call, he let y'all know how he felt the body. But I don't necessarily feel that way about this situation, man. People in Hollywood, a lot of times, they be blessed, man. And people don't want to help you count your blessings, so they automatically going to throw the devil on you. When that may not be the case. But on the other hand, it might be exactly the case. So that means that Mike Epps is no more innocent than anybody else in Hollywood. So what give him the right to call out Shannon Sharp when he don't work with Cat Williams and he was getting chased all through the hood by Damon? He was on the set when Cat Williams was in the bathroom talking about he working with a monster. And Damon came up in there with that telephone book. Mike Epps was right there. He watched Cat run down the street trying to hold his pants up because that man was trying to snatch his cookies oh my now he act like he don't want to go sit on club shay shay man when a comedian doing good it brings the hate out of other comedians even if they already successful mike kept sitting there talking about that show should have been me hating oh said that man had on a fake Fendi and everything. Cat ain't gonna do nothing but go back to jail. Nah, let me take that back. I hope he don't never go back to jail, man. We love Cat Williams. And the reason why we love Cat Williams so much is because he's very relatable. Everybody in their family knows somebody that took a mug shot with the dookie shag. A pimp with a problem. 
He been to all them Hollywood parties. He know all the details, the ins and outs. He was there. He witnessed it with his own two eyes, man. He was a menace to society at one point, but I'm so happy to see him with his life back on track. He looked healthier, wealthier. And this chick thought she was going to be dealing with a, a smoked out cat. And he turned around and bit her and her ass and now her career over with. She was going to try to make her career off of Cat Williams and turned around and lost her career for trying this man. And that's admirable, man. He held his own against a diva. He out diva. Oh my goodness. She tried to out deep, man. You bet she she fucked up. Cat got real catty on her ass and she she still stuck. She looking at her vagina like, what's the point? Oh my goodness. He destroyed this chick, man. Now, that drama that he got is stuck with Shay Shay. And then this man turned around and bought Monique on his show. Now he got all types of heat on his neck. He guilty by association, man. How you think Oprah felt when she watched the video? When Monique was dragging her... And they gave Monique the biggest platform she ever stood on to talk shit about them. How you think that made them feel? This man got a bullseye on his back right now as far as the entertainment business is concerned. He should have never. He put two black balls on his show. Now they saying he ain't got no nuts. Oh my goodness. How in the hell that happened, man? Listen at this. Yeah. Now you can say all that other stuff. I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. I don't look. I heard that a thousand times. Y'all yeah. know who I'm talking about. I don't know who you talking about, say, but I'm with you. I'm a, nigga. Say I'm, my name what? again, and I'm gonna put the. I'm a, and I'm gonna release the DMs because yeah. you're lying. Yeah. You said I reached out to you to come on Club Shay Shay, and you a mofo lie. Now when I, I see you, yeah. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see if you about that. Okay. I'm gonna see if you want to say what you've been saying on. Yeah. Trying to get some jokes because yeah. you got mad because Cat Williams did what he did. Now, yeah. Now, when I see you, yeah. I'm gonna see if you really about that. Yeah, and when I when I when I see you, no, 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 no. I'm gonna no. see if the, him talk. Oh man, they, they they talking about jumping his two football players talking about running down on Mike. Oh my goodness! They gonna scoop his ass. They gonna do him like how they used to do back in the old days. They gonna call a play on his ass. Oh my as soon as you go over there, make sure you look at me. When you look at me, I'm going to run. You're going to catch him, and we're going to scoop him. After we scoop, that's when you can have your way with him. And then pull his jock strap up his ass. You know the play. Yo, i seen football players do all different types of zesty stuff on the field. Tackle a man. As soon as he hit the ground, the nigga's still humping. The referee got to pull them boys off of them boys. It'd be a whole pile of them. Niggas can't wait to get in the frenzy. Like, oops, my bad. They all 69 did on the damn field and all that. It's like an orgy when somebody get the damn ball. They chasing cheeks. They grabbing whatever the fuck they can grab, yo. Oh my goodness. Hold on, yeah. People don't even watch this no more. And this is the school of Shan. This man don't want championships chasing tails. Hold up, pile up. Them boy, they be reaching this. Look, they all up each other. Booty cheese. They they linked in, bent, rolled. Even the referee came and got a little bit of ass. She humping his leg. He pushing down on his boot. Look how he pushing down on that nigga booty. He looking like he just can't take it no more. This one. This some freaky shit, man. And don't watch it in slow mo. They be grabbing a little bit of everything, man. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Yo, yo, yo. What's going on? What's going on? Don't be shy, your ass on the phone. You better snap out of it. Oh, no, I'm not shy, man. I don't think Mike uh, is wrong for going as uh man. He did be wearing them tight shirts. Yeah, he did have on the male lingerie when he did the Cat Williams interview. But you saying Mike did the right thing? That's bad for business either way. Mike's supposed to be a businessman. And Shannon 
I guess he good business, but then again, he hey, bad hey, business. Yo, you on the TV right now, dog? Am I? Cause, uh, Cause you listening right and you now. don't hear yourself, and you so concerned about the damn TV to where you ain't even trying to interact with the conversation, bro. And best believe, in a couple of minutes, you gonna hear yourself on TV, and you also gonna hear the part where I let you go for trying to listen to yourself on the TV, man. Somebody make that make sense for me. I got love for you, brother. Don't be no stranger. We gonna holla at you later. Real talk. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? This is Mariah. Oh, what's going on? How you feeling, sister? I'm feeling all right. How are you? Man, I'm over here doing a whole lot of complaining because it seemed like black celebrities find a way to be beefing. How you feel about all this? I feel like what's going on is crazy. First of all, especially the Mike Epps thing, I feel like one... He wants to be included in the conversation so bad mm. that he's going about it the wrong way. Like, even if he was mentioned in a brief moment in that Cat Williams segment, nobody remembers that out of everything that was discussed in that conversation. But the fact that you're going on stage, this black man is having the most successful YouTube career that we've seen any black... Granted, he's a black celebrity. He has an advantage. But... He's having a good year. So now to attack this man and be like, oh, he's gay. Or he's having intercourse with his assistant. Or now I got to get up on stage and say that he's Medea's sister and stuff. It's like, why? You want to be on his po- You want to come on his podcast. You want to, you know, you already said that you want to, you wanted that clout. And you wish that Kat would have made, gave you more clout in that interview. You said that yourself, Mike. Now you on stage and you dragging it and you making yourself look crazy. Or what? Now you talking about shooting this man. Does he want to beat you up because you calling him gay? Well, sister, let me ask you this. How can Shannon be clean in the midst of all that filth and that dirt they be slinging? I mean, it's a whole mud fight. How can he not get no mess on him? It's on his show and he don't did it by count. He don't bought him on me. He, they, they sling in the mud. And he no. try, he's standing there like he's squeaky clean. What you got to say about that? So because somebody comes on they pla- on my platform and speaks their truth and say what they got to say and get it off their chest, chest I got to be guilty by association. Even though I didn't say anything, even though I allowed you to just come on here and give your response to whatever was said for you to clear the air. Cat Williams came on there and he cleared the air because... One, I feel like Cat Williams, he did numbers because he never talks. We don't hear from Cat Williams. Mm -hmm. So he came on that platform. He said everything that he needed to say, and he left it there on that platform. Now everybody that's Monique's numbers ain't doing so well because she's been saying the same thing for years. We've been knowing this. We've been know Tyler Perry did you wrong. We know Monique did you wrong. We know. But I just feel like Shannon Sharp, it's, it sucks for him because if he was a white man, I hate to make race or whatever, but if this was TMZ or something like that, I don't feel like people would be going so hard. They'd be like, oh, this is amazing. If this was Gail King, they'd be like, oh, okay. They come up there telling what they need to say and stuff. But because it's Shannon Sharp and he's a celebrity and he's an ex-athlete, he's supposed to tell people, oh, don't say that. You can't say that. That's my friend. That's biased. If it happened to them, let that, let them say what happened to them. Yo, ma, you got a hairstylist, a hairdresser that you go to? Oh. Do you? No, I am I am the hairstylist. I am that person. Well, for you women out there listening that got hairstylists, can you imagine your hairstylist, the chick you go get your hair done with, you talk, you laugh with her and all that shit, and you pay her your money and you keep it moving? Can you imagine... If she had other chicks sitting in that same chair talking about you like a dog and she just skinning and grinning and laughing, wouldn't you say she grimy? No. No. It's just business. First of all, if somebody would sit in my chair, I'm not, this is business, baby. I'm not supposed to be like, you talking about my client. You doing this, that, and the I'm not up in here. I'm not co-signing what this person is saying. I'm also not going back and repeating nothing this person is saying because I'm not getting involved in the foolishness and myth. 
But also, people just don't come in there dry on some, oh, so I heard you do Tasha's hair, so let me tell you why I don't like Tasha. First of all, if that's the case, you need to move around because you came in here on ulterior motives anyway. So you would be what okay. people do. You would be okay with running a messy salon where people just go in there and sling mud, your customers slinging mud at each other. You would be okay with that? Slinging mud at each other? That's like going to the barbershop and y'all just talking about each other. Y'all gossiping. Y'all talking about this nigga, what happened down the street with Leroy and them. It's the exact same thing. Men don't do that, especially amongst men that they about to be seeing on the regular. That's not something that men be trying to do because you're going to have to see that man. Okay, so if you're a man, you got to see that man. You're going to say whatever you had to say in that chair when you see that man, too. But why even be running your mouth doing the girly gossiping and spilling tea? Maybe they haven't ran across this man. Or maybe they've spoken to this man, and now you done came on this platform, and now you're trying to make me look like a sucker. And now I got to come out here and let you know that you lied. If Shannon was a barber... He gave Steve Harvey the nice beard trim and had him shining. He did. He gave Cedric the Entertainer the best lineup in the business. He sat down with these brothers, bonded with them, and had them looking good out there in the public, promoted everything they had going on. Who wouldn't want to go on Shay Shay to sit down with that brother? And at the turn of 2024, he being zesty and spiteful and slinging <laughs> mud and just what the... It seemed like he had Ow. this planned all along. How? What did he do? What did he do that was so slinging mud and zesty besides bring people on? The Cat Williams was the first person that came on that said they are lying to you. And the reason why he said that is because those previous people, he had them speaking on Cat Williams, Ricky Smiley. Talking about the on um, Friday after next, he asked Steve or Cedric the Entertainer. And all <laughs> these people was up there. He had them speaking on Cat. So, no, you can't make nobody do nothing. These are grown men. You can't say Shannon Sharp had nobody doing anything. This, this man keep cards. You seen him with the cards. It's, he it, asking questions. They could have said, you know what, brother? I don't want to answer that. That don't got nothing to do with anything. Ricky Smiley could have easily left out the part that he was supposed to be Money Mike. We could have lived without the information, but he volunteered the information. And then he decided to go in with the information. He didn't mean no malice by that. I mean, either way, it was a bootleg movie. It was a, a hood film. It, it really ain't that. It, if he was Money Mike or the Santa Claus, what difference do it make? They both some goofy ass characters. It's a comedy. It does. It does. It does matter, though. It really does matter. Because we know that was a bold face line. So for Shannon to allow him to be like and to, and to indulge in the lie. You know what I mean? But what about this lie? What about okay. the lie? Of Ricky Smiley being forced, the only way Cat will work with him is if he put on a dress in the next movie. So Cat wasn't that far from wearing the dress. He had the bang, he had the, the two earrings, the lip. He was zesty in the movie as well. So what Ricky Smiley been wearing the dress before Cat Williams even did the movie with his ass. Okay, so we gonna say because he had a little flip and a little bang and a curl. It does Snoop Dogg coming up with the little curls and stuff. Does that make him zesty? Yes. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. It does, <laughs> man. Ricky been doing this for years. He he did it with Cat Williams. He did it with other people. But Cat making it seem like that was Ricky first time putting on a dress because he put it in the contract. And he he was no, so he desperate said. to be in the movie with Cat Williams. He went along and put on the dress. No, Cat Williams said that Ricky Smiley is only funny in a dress and that he needs to play up to what he's good at, which is true. Ricky Smiley, what has Ricky Smiley done? Not that this is about Ricky Smiley, but what is he funny in as himself? Ricky Smiley is a That's great communicator. like Tyler communicator. Perry out of a dress. He's a great communicator, man. He's a good guy. He's likable. He's lovable. Ricky Smiley is cool people. And that's why he was able to make it so far in the game. He's just a cool, he's a good brother, man. Who can't see that about Ricky Smiley? It ain't no malice and nothing he got going on. He ain't selling dope. He ain't rapping. He ain't talking about shooting and killing. Why is they, why is he even dragged into any type of beef? Ricky Smiley yeah. don't beef. Ricky Smiley don't beef. He don't. Ricky Smiley, he do. The way that the older comics beef is different. Cat. The way that they go about talking about things is different. Mm, so you saying that 
They make it look it's good for like the public. It's more like I throw a rock and hide the hands, uh, where he's just like, let me tell y'all what's been going on behind the scenes. Mm, it's real easy to be like, Ricky Smiley and Steve Harvey, they stand up dudes and stuff outside looking in. We don't do business with these men. We mm, don't know. They might be some real slime balls in real life. That's what you're saying? Could be. I don't know them. But it, I know everybody mm. ain't lying. Everybody don't got a bad story to tell about y'all. You know all them good stories they got to say about Cat Williams giving people money and stuff. I ain't heard not one story like that about Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, or any of them other dudes. Because mm -mm. they come from the class of, I had to work hard, I had to do what I had to do, you need to do it too. That's where they come from. Instead of trying to uplift each other and help each other, it's, why is he funny? Why he getting picked over me? You know, stuff like that, slick, underhanded stuff that's trying to stop other people from prospering. Well, let me ask you this, sister. Is Mike wrong for going at Shannon like that? Because at the yeah. end of the day, Shannon, he a brother. He trying to make some money out here. And Mike just went ahead and threw this man under the bus in front of an audience. How you feel about that? I feel like he got up there. Granted, it was a joke. And he had to phrase the joke to make it seem like somebody reached out to him. But all it shows is how desperate you are to come on his platform, how desperate you are to have some attention, how desperate you are. And why do you want to come up there so bad? If this is uplifting black men and stuff and doing all this stuff that you say you want to do, Mike Epps, why, why are you so in a rush to come up there? What do you want to talk about? He concerned about Shannon looking at his balls while he's sitting on the couch. And well, Shannon with that tight ass bitch. blouse on with them big man boobs <laughs> flexing all in his face. Well, he worried about the wrong thing. He might be a little zesty if he worried about who looking he, at his dick. He said he looked like he said when Shannon called him for the interview, he said no Medea and hung up the phone in his face. Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. Which really wasn't that funny. He called the Medea. Medea, you want to call my bad door and interview with me? Yep, Cat <laughs> Williams is here, Monique. Come on, bring your ass. Come on. Said no thank you, Medea. If we're talking about Zesty, how do you feel about D.L. Hughley coming at Monique? He didn't come at everybody else so hard, he, as hard as he came at Monique, calling her fat and everything else. He ripped her head off. And somebody need to spank Monique. Her daddy ain't beating her right. Not just saying he need to be beating on the woman, but somebody need to tap that ass. Monique got here acting told up. You she ain't got no daddy. She don't got no daddy. That's why they man her daddy. Her husband. So he said that. She said that he trained her like she a pit bull dog. Oh yeah, that's cringe. I don't like that. She was a wild pit bull, and her daddy told me, "No, don't do that no more." Mo she act like he a dog trainer. I mean, listen. I mean, she's. I mean, she said it. She said she had friendly coochie. So hey, she his dog. His his main bitch. Oh my god, mm, that's his bottom. How you gonna disrespect Monique like that? You supposed to check me. But you went along with it, so you must feel a way about Monique as well. I feel like it's icky. I don't like that daddy. I feel like that's, I don't know. That's your husband, yeah, but I feel like, mm -mm -mm, that's going too far. She got but incest. that's another topic. Got incest all in her family. She said her husband was her like her brother when they first met. Like, they when they kissed, they're like, oh, we did something wrong. Like, they family members or some shit. And that's why they liked it, because it, it felt forbidden. See, icky. The same woman that her brother went on Oprah and let the world know that he did her dirty when they was younger. You think he got paid for that? Yeah, I think Monique and Oprah paid his ass to go up there to make her victim. That way, people will give her roles and money and shit from sympathy. Like, oh, she may not be talented. She may not be funny. I don't like the way she look, but don't talk bad about her because her brother did blase, blase, blah. They've been running that game forever. Can you imagine? That's like Kenneth Petty coming up there and admitting that he used to molest people. No Ooh. black man is going to come up there and be like openly admit, I used to molest my sister or I used to touch somebody. Unless somebody said you're going to be straight for life if you, where he going to work? Would he, why would he throw his whole life away on the Oprah Winfrey show with no mask? We might need to check. <laughs> it's some I'm going to check and see how her brother's doing. Ain't no way. Is Look, he on the sex offender registry? 
What's that man's name? I'm finna look him up as soon as we got phone. Monique don't even know. She don't even talk to her grandkids, man. Her grandkids. Is that true? Christmas Stone Rock. Allegedly, that's what they saying. She ain't got no relationship with her kids, so oh, no, they, it ain't even right. Oh, for the holidays, it's her and her daddy with a Cornish hand. <laughs> That's sad, man. And she up there spewing all of this toxic energy. Are you one of the type of people that agree with what Monique had to say? Is you feeling her whatsoever? Can I be honest? Yes. I felt like Monique, when she came up there, I felt like she was she was giving preachy. Like, I want y'all to feel me. I, I, like, her, she wanted everything she said to have so much weight to it mm -hmm. instead of just talking and having a normal conversation. Mm. That's what I felt like. It's like, girl, everything you said wasn't deep. We done all been fucked over by somebody. We done all been lied on. When it come to money, you can't trust nobody when it come to business and stuff. So really what you have went through isn't revolutionary, honey. But at the end of the day, I felt like if you had came up there, I just didn't feel like she was being genuine. This mm. ain't a message. You didn't come up here to give us a message. You ain't preach. This ain't you ain't the leader of the black community. Just come up here and tell us how you feel and, and go on about your business. That's all you have to do. Yeah, man. And for Shannon to have a lane for a person like Monique to go up there and air her grievances and really don't nobody want to hear that shit for real. Like, damn, Mo. For real. Like, it's your hu your husband is the problem, baby. Like, we hear what you're saying, but you was cool with it until you met this dude right here, man. He's the fucking problem. Because if she was single... Um, and she came across Oprah and um, if she did all that free shit for Soul Plane and the fat girls movies and shit, if she ain't have her husband and she did Precious, she would have did all that promo for free with a smile on her face. Well, or you could look at it as her husband made her see that she had some worth, some no, value. A husband trying to make sure he get the biggest cut as possible with his greedy ass. What was that? If the bags from stop, how can you get a cut off a bag that's not coming in? Man, let Monique climb her mountain. She was climbing that mountain very well until he came along. Now she can't even take another step. Fooling with him. Got him attached to her back. Mm -hmm. We might need to see where Sydney came from, too. Yo, man, I, I did the research, man. Where he come from? They grew up together in Baltimore. Uh -huh. They went to school together. They was in class. They was kids together. They was uh -huh. coming. He never wanted to date her. They he never he pro he ain't never step out with her in public like that until mm. she became famous. When she got grown and she started doing movies and shows, he started calling more frequently. Every time she come to town, he want to see her. He all on her nuts. He bigging her up. And you know, a chick like Monique is used to having people ditching her after a while. Like she say something <laughs> slick, they look her up and down like your big ass and just keep it moving. <laughs> this the only person that was in her corner. He never let up. But this Negro always had an agenda. Like I, I bag that for the money. I, I get with Monique for the bread. They had an open relationship, so he didn't even care who was who was up with his. They was his wife. He didn't give a damn. Like, look, they could smash if they want to. Just bring home the check. Oh my goodness. You think he's been around since she was married? Cause she was married twice before him. She you was, think they was messing around? You think she's always had open relationships? Yo, they it's knew each other. It's an open relationship. Just, I mean, what's the point? Can, hold on, sister. Can you imagine a teenage Monique and she got this homeboy, this best friend or whatever. You don't think she gonna let him squeeze some cheeks? They having sleepovers really? and shit. You, you don't think she gonna... I'm talking about Monique. Lick your lips, wink and bark. Rawr, Monique. You don't think she ever tried to throw that man a little something? Absolutely. Monique was getting down. She was getting damn. Yeah, Monique, she was getting damn, baby. Especially back in the day on them comedy specials, you can tell. She might have been a big girl, but she was one of those big girls that was not afraid to get down. She was getting damn. And I love Monique for that because she spoke her truth. She lived her life. She do what she do. I can't disrespect her in no way, shape, or form. All I'm saying is this dude, Shay Shay, he may be the problem, man. Where all this, dr this toxic smoke he got brewing that he cooking and cat. Probably wouldn't even have took it there with him if he ain't jump off the back 
asking him them questions about his former guest. I don't feel like that's fair. Why does Shannon, Shay Shay, why does he have to be the one that gets blamed? Why? Is it because he's a black man? Is it because he's inviting black comedians on his platform? If he invites Joe Rogan, ask him about the six unfunny comedians, will that make every, everything even for everybody? If I come over your house and get slapped, <laughs> I'm going to be looking at you like, what type of ratchetness you don't bought me up into? God, nigga, <laughs> I, you knew this. You knew all this shit. You knew people. You knew. You knew. You know. You knew. No, because that set up the Shannon be up there. He just be listening like everybody else. He just get caught up in the shenanigans. So I guess if you invite messy people around you, you can, you can basically assume messy stuff is going to happen. So you saying but that. But that's what gets the views. So you saying the first time around he bought in Cat Williams, he just was an innocent bystander that got caught up in the middle of the mud slinking? Yeah. Yeah, he had a cat. I gotta take a sip of that cat. He was playing. He was playing possum the whole time, sitting there. He looking like he was counting the money. Like, yes, this is it. Oh man, we're going for the touchdown. You know, he used to be a football. He he see the play. He ain't stupid. People make it seem like he ain't been a sportsman. Won Super Bowls and shit. All he he got a championship mindset. He know how to play people to the left. He even had Cat Williams up there talking about if we was on the line, the opposing team, us versus them. Shannon understand what the hell he talking about, man. He 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 the coach that put Cat Williams in the game. Oh my goodness! Do he not tell me up there like the cartoons with the dollar signs and that. Just because he talk, people think the country boy stupid. Just cause oh he a country boy, hell no, he just old country boy. That man is brilliant. How the hell you think he was able to stay on first take? For seven something years. He look, a lot of them southern gentlemen know how to play a fool, but they far from stupid. Listen, if all I gotta do is invite people onto my platform and let they let them run their mouth and it runs up the views, that's what I'm gonna do. Shannon don't say nothing. Half the time he just listening, he asks the question. These are grown people. Yeah. If they don't wanna answer the question, they don't gotta answer the question. They are coming on there now to respond to everything else everybody is saying. So, therefore, they're coming onto his platform for the drama. Let me explain something to y'all. Shannon Sharp in the club, Shay Shay, is a, uh, what can you call it? It was a systematic approach that they put together for the long run. It wasn't no, oh, let's just doodle around and see if we could draw a picture. Or let's just, you know, shoot the shit and see who we could have come up to the show and whoever comes, that's all that matter. This man been playing a game all the way. He knew when you trying to win the championship, you look at all of the competition, all of the other teams, you see what's going on. If you trying to win the game, this man, Shannon Sharp, seeing what was going on out there in the entertainment atmosphere and find him some easy fish that for drama, man. It was Kat. It was Steve. It was said. He got Monique. He, oh, look, it, it's teams now. 2023 mm -hmm. was the Steve Harvey team. It was it was uh, Cedric, Steve, and all the good guys. Ricky Smiley, that was the team for 2023. Now, the opposing team for 2024, they don't play fair. They fight dirty. Oh. See, I got to disagree. I feel like Shannon is the exact same person he is on Nightcap. He, if y'all calling him messy over on his Shay Shay, he's messy on Nightcap. And then on top of that, on Shay Shay, he was interviewing comedians. Who would have thought comedians would have been so messy? Who would have thought that comedians? Shit, if you got your mama jokes your whole life, hell yeah, you going to be messy. Oh my All right. They comedians, man. You don't crack no jokes about nobody. Mama, they offend all types of people. There's plenty of comedians <laughs> that got that ass beat for running their mouth. Hecklers hopping up on stage, shooting and shit. They got to run out the back door because they said something messy and don't piss somebody off in front of their girl and all that. True. He, he dirty, man. Mm -hmm. Look, either way, we're going to love Shannon Sharp. He's a old, y'all, just because he look young. 
Y'all fail to remember he grandpa. Who? He old man. He ain't stupid. He's an old, oh, no. old black man. He look young. He stay in shape. He healthy. But this man is an old geezer. And he playing people like a damn fool, man. That's not true. He's interviewed Chris Brown. He's interviewed music- musicians and everything. And they ain't even turning up like how these comedians are. Everybody is, is hitting a nerve. It's striking a nerve. It's hitting a chord with people. feeling. People are feeling some type of way. If they didn't feel some type of way, they wouldn't be up in arms on Twitter and coming out and doing interviews on comedy club and stuff like that. You know doing you know laying up funny? in bed with gray beards talking about I'm gonna shoot you when I see you at the All Star game. Man, and you know what's messed up about this whole situation, sister? He did an interview with Usher and it fell flat after mm-hmm. the Cat Williams interview. Now Usher's big time. He got the on um, residence in Vegas. He's a platinum selling artist. Usher is a main event every event, man. But this Super time Bowl. around, for the Super Bowl, everything. But this time around, it fell flat at the cat. How in the hell do Usher fall flat at the cat? I mean, 21 Savage. Did you see that one? I not that we're talking about here, but did I you did see that not. one? Did you see that one? It was not good. So it was it was weird. He's a weird dude. I'm just gonna say that. God. And you know, he did twenty one savage country Wayne. Did you see the country Wayne one? Very dry. Dry. Damn. Very dry. I did see that. It wasn't bad. It wasn't you know, but he's so he was he's clean and he wants you to know how he's clean. And I wanna tell you how I started having sex at a young age and why I got sixteen baby mamas and why me and Jess don't talk no more. Yo, you know how crackheads be like, that first high is the one they be chasing? Mm-hmm. You, what if Cat, that Cat Williams interview was that first high everybody hit? Oh and f- from now on, they going to watch Shay Shay just to chase that first time Cat Williams came in there and said that um, Cedric the Entertainer looked like a walrus. Oh <laughs> what if that's the case? It probably is the case. I feel like now people want to come up there and they want to see if they can hit numbers and stuff or say something that can go viral or something like that. Because everything, whether they want to admit it or not, everything's rooted in jealousy. Everything's a competition. Like you said, everything's a competition. Football, you know, sport, whatever. Everything you said is facts. And I got to let you know this. You are simply amazing. Your conversation, man, I ain't never, you can talk, the chemistry is, I mean, the, I'm there. You are one of a kind. I mean, that, you know what, man? I'm going to have to save this number on my phone because you special. And I said that with a go to. I love you to death, man. I don't want you to be no stranger neither. That's why the next time when I go live, you definitely got to call back. I love you to death, ma. We going to talk to you real soon. No doubt. You'll be all right. Oh, my God. My heart pounding through my chest, man. I can't Ooh. even do it no more. Ooh, that woman was in titillated, man. Well, back to this real life news. Shay Shay. Be at them parties. He be showing up to the football games with his boy Toy, a well-known dude on the DL. Not even on the DL. He on the up high. And he be out there with Shay Shay. Yo, hello, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Oh, my goodness. What up, though? This is T from Detroit. What's going on? What up, though? Like Jalen Rose. How you feeling? I'm, 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 man. Are you through making love to this woman? Because I'd be damn. You, oh my God. I Hold forgot on. half the stuff I wanted to say. So you over there so jealous to where you can't even <laughs> think straight. You just like, oh, not my man. Not my man. <laughs> your ass in your feelings right now. You really called up here to cuss me out and all that. <laughs> I've been over here huffing and puffing like, damn. I've been calling and calling. You've been ignoring my calls because you you just had you had a lot to say to old girl. She, I mean, who I well, like her. Wasn't I she like a you. hell of a conversationalist? 
Um. I, okay. All right. Yeah, she was. She was amazing. Any more compliments you want to give her? She, Any more she, compliments you want to give her? She was educated. She she had an education. I could tell. She was all that. She was all that. She was black. She was dark and lovely. All that. All that. You know, Dark and lovely you with nice, you with, get juice, of it. with juicy, dark and lovely with juicy lips. And you couldn't get enough of it, could Hey, you? man, I mean, she was shining. I, was, I let her shine. You so did, because you hang up on my ass in a minute, but it's okay. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You over there complaining. You and your feelings. We talk about Shay Shay <laughs> and Mike Epps. If they was in the head up fight, which one of them you think going to win? Man, Shay Shay would beat the brakes off of Mike oh Epps. Oh, my God. Don't let that zesty shit fool you, boy. Man, Shay Shay built like a motherfucker. That man is all man. I don't care what he do, you know, behind closed doors, but look at look how that man built. Please, he will break the... Man, please. What if Mike Epps beat his ass on camera? I don't see that happening. And buddy. Shannon trying to crawl away, like, oh my God, somebody help me. Oh shit, this nigga. Oh, <laughs> he bleed, he leaking and shit. What if, what if Mike, what if Mike gave him that I work? I don't see that happening. Hey, remember when you did that clip? And uh, you know, I don't know the white guy name, the one that tried to went that went off for him when he was doing that broadcasting thing. Yeah, the dude Skip Bayless really snapped on him. <laughs> Right, but then, like, look at his face right there. Like, like, look at Shannon's face. Remember then at one point, Shannon, you could tell Shannon had enough. It was like, you know what? Bring it on back. Like, you know, you could tell he had, like, a, a breaking point at one point. I don't know if you remember, but anyway. Yeah. I, um. Ooh, man, she a hard act to follow, ain't she? Where she at? We gonna call her dark and lovely, man. I'm gonna put her in the arm. <laughs> In the history books, and uh, you trying you are you out here and bomb you you bombed in front of an audience, man. I forgot half the stuff I wanted to say, you, man. You called you up talking. and bombed <laughs> in front of a whole un- <laughs> oh man, like what you okay, doing? But let me, okay, okay, let me tell you this. First of all, why are you so hard on my girl Monique? I don't see she did. I don't. I don't think she did anything wrong. You know what I think? I think like with Cat Williams, first of all, he's extremely charismatic. Mm -hmm. I think that's why people love him because he don't play by the rules and he speak his truth and and he's a good storyteller. And I think the same with Monique. I don't see why people be hating. You know, Monique was screaming the same shit that Taraji been saying. She, she, She went on one little show, cried some tears, and I mean, everybody just rallied. Monique been screaming from the rooftops for years, saying the same shit, but didn't get no traction. And that's all she was doing. She was defending herself and speaking on the same shit that Kat was speaking on. And I don't understand why y'all, why you hating on her so bad. Why you hating on Monique? You know, <clears throat> Monique went up there and said that her and Kat was maternal twins or something. <laughs> like it's a two for it's two, serious. y'all. Like if you, if me and Cat, that's who, that's what we are. You know, we just drama, we messy. But why would Cat want to be associated with the likes of Monique? Like but who, who they Batman? And, they Batman and Robin and Steve Harvey, the that's... Ice Man and Oprah Winfrey. Um, she the damn Joker. What the hell going on here? All that, all that, all that. Um, Oprah is fucking Cruella Duvall. Um, whatever, you know what? That it's not like um, Shannon tried to bait Cat Williams into talking about Steve and talking about. He was responding, and I, he was responding right off the rip. Like, hold up, let me set the record straight. You know, so it's not like hold on, you know I, Shannon was be, what? Shit, Oprah what? Winfrey is Corella Deville. That's kind of fucked Hell up. Yeah. What? Oprah is dirty, man. Oprah why why is y'all dirty. treat this woman like she a old? She just a villain out here in these streets. I doubt if that's the case. She just, you, you think so? She, she then why is Scrooge. everybody saying? Why is everybody saying the same thing? Who who is who is rallying behind Oprah? Like, oh yeah, she's really for the black people. Oh, she's really for the sisters. She. I don't see that. Oprah is a sister with a big, big bag. Uh huh. She got and how a did big she get old bag. bag. Hey, hate come along with the bag. 
It's attached mm. to the bag. I love Oprah, but I know the hate is attached to the bag. Because um, if because well, if Oprah to... if Oprah was doing bad with ashy lips, and they took everything, I don't know. I'm living in a trail. I don't know. Her GoFundMe would be through the roof. Oh my goodness! Y'all make sure hey, y'all just... wouldn't let Oprah go down like that. But since she up, I y'all want to try to tear her down. Y'all need to cut that out and love that woman. Look, okay, think about it. You okay? You talking about the bad? Look at what, uh, and I'm about to sidetrack. But think about what happened with, in Hawaii. As rich as this bitch is, a, I'm trying not to cuss. This woman is a billionaire, and she out there asking for old people to give the send money, while she then went behind and bought more property. This woman is all about herself. She all she has ever done is. And she still got more money than me and you. Why are you talking of about she it? Does. Why but are you talking about it? it? And you know how what? A lot it? of that ain't right. But hating on somebody how ain't gonna help. Get it up? Hating on somebody ain't gonna help you gain success. But it look ain't. though, she hates on black people all the time. Look how she did Michael. Look how she did R. Kelly. Look how she even tried to go off on um What that got to do with Mike Epps and Shay Shay? Well that guy I, we was talking about um You Oprah sidetracked Winfrey and slipped and bumped your head, ma. <laughs> You're going to be you all, you're going to be, hey, man, I do what I got to do sometimes, but you, you all over the place, man. I need to get you back on track. But one thing for sure, I love you to death, ma, and don't be no stranger. <sighs> all right, baby. Yo, I, yo, make sure you call back because I'll be looking forward to your phone calls. We're going to holler at you later, ma. Real talk. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Yo, yo. Damn. Uh, let me answer this one. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? This is your boy Ellis from Ogden. How you doing? Ellis from where? Ogden. Where that shit, bro? Utah. Ogden, Utah. Yo, he calling all the way from Utah, y'all. So that ain't nothing but love, man. We want to hear what you got to say for sure. Yeah, hey, what's up to you and Mr. Reg? Yo, man, we over here chilling, bro. We talking about Mike Epps, him and Shannon Sharp going back and forth, and it looked like they was going beef at the All-Star weekend. They trying to set it up. It's like they looking to pull up in these streets, man. What you got to say about that? Uh, what's his name? Oh, Shay Shay, he just full of, he just full of hot air. He ain't going to pull up on nobody. He ain't going to do nothing. He got too much to lose. Well... He concerned about his reputation, all this shit slinging back and forth, people disrespecting him. He got kids, he got family, he got people that love him, he got people looking at him sideways. He like, hold up, don't make me rip off this shirt and go full WrestleMania on one of these niggas. Like, Mike, you ain't have to do he that, bro. Do like, I ain't no soft cookie. I ain't no soft cookie. Don't think you're gonna be able to talk about me like that. Because if Mike get yeah. away with it, then. People going to be throwing shots all over the place. He got to nip that in the bud before it get too ugly. Like, look, I'll get at you. They say he ain't finna do nothing. Yo. It's all, it's all nice for the radio. Him and his boy with the Ocho Cinco talking about I'm on probation. Ain't that going to happen. They all talk. They might hop out the car and do some <laughs> some flip them boys up. Heads, you beat them up. Tails, you beat them up. Yeah, talk. Yak him. You saying when Shay Shay pull up, he got security guards that's buffing him? <laughs> Can you imagine yep. this big buff dude with big, bigger buffer security guards? You saying he that frail out here in these streets? I ain't saying he frail. I'm just saying he got too much to lose. Doing hey. he lay a finger on Mike, all my guy do is fall out. That's a that's a million dollar check right there. Shit for the pride. Sometimes a brother take the L. I wish I wish Shay Shay was after me. As soon as he touched me, I'm falling out, going on the floor, my neck, my back. Cut the oh, check. Man. See, that's why he ain't even trying to be fooling with regular people like that. That's I why they moved person. to Beverly Hills and all, cause your ass will bump into him and spin around real hard and bust your head on the concrete and try to my sue neck, this man. Back. Your neck and no back. Person, by the way. Hey man, it is what it is. Do you feel like Mike Epps was wrong? For going that Shannon like that, bro. Negative. Uh, what Shay Shay need to lighten up? Mike Epps, he does what he does. He talks shit. He clowns people. 
I mean, you want to put yourself out there on a platform like YouTube, and then with these uh, last few interviews, you viral around the world, people going to throw shots at you, period. Man, people going to throw shots. People going to try to violate you. People going to try to get at you. But what can you really do when you got God on your side besides put your feet up and chill, man? Because that's what people like to do out there. You really can't let it stress you like that. You got to live your life to the fullest. I hate to see Shay Shay all riled up. Looking now, like he ready to jump through the screen at Mike Epps. Like, what's going on out here in these streets, man? You had to do two snaps. He act like he was about to, like, he want to see that man. Like, come here, Mike, let me talk. You and Gary Indiana, Mike Epps run shit. You know they going, the mayor going to beat your ass going there, Mike. They going to boot you he from ready, the city. You ready to go upside Mike's head with his purse. And in Indiana, and bro. is a designer, fashion designer friend. And in Indiana, you don't, man, Mike, he don't bought the whole neighborhood. He the king. They say he, ain't doing nothing. He, come on, man. They see Mike Epps car. They see his car. They slowing on the brakes so he can pass. Like, oh shit, there go Mike. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Uh, it's like this. I didn't even I would have never known Mike Epps said what he said if they say didn't respond. By you responding, you didn't gave that you didn't you didn't val you didn't was that validated what he said not validated but you didn't give that man life you don't gave that man life you don't responded to what he said and now they gotta figure out who gonna be next on club shay shay we appreciate your phone call brother and don't be no stranger hey, neither hey, say, make sure hey, you call back man we got so hold on red she was about to say something oh, hung up on that man yo hello hello who this is man hey my name is kp how you doing oh man we doing amazing we would love it if you cut that off in the background, please. Okay, yes, I sure will. Yeah, man, because I'm glad you over there first listening. I've never doing anything like this before. Yeah, that's why I was saying I'm, I'm happy to know that you over there listening. I appreciate the fact that you took the time to listen, and then you turned around and picked up the phone and called in, too. So, look, I'm going to show you all the love and respect. Whatever you got to say, we all is. Okay, baby. I'm 62 years old, and I've been watching YouTube and, you know, our people. And when Cat Williams came on, Shay Shay, I had already been looking at some things because I have an 18-year-old daughter, and she's got this asphyxiation on Beyonce. I don't like it. So you got to approach the young kids in a different type of way. When I saw that, I didn't know he was a football player. I didn't know who he was. All I knew was he was correct. He's right. Steve Harvey said something about Shay Shay got, he a NFL player, he a sportsman, and, and he ain't said nothing about sports on his club, on his show. He hasn't said anything in my personal opinion because yes, he is NFL previously. This is the present. This is his new show. He's Shay Shay he, now. He's Shay Shay now. He's interviewing people. He's learning different things. He Wendy Williams so don't put now. put the brother down. Wendy. Yes. So that's what you're saying? He on his Wendy Williams vibe and you need to respect yes. that? That's the way yes. he want to do it. Shay Shay, he out yes. here shimmying for niggas. He hasn't disrespected anyone. And as far as I can see, no one that he has had on his show has disrespected anyone. It's like writing a book. Everyone is telling their story. Sister. It's up to you as to whether or not you want to believe Sister. it. Sister. Just because somebody know how to act does not mean that they not messy. That's right. Shannon Shaw. That's right. He he knows how to act, but that don't mean he ain't being messy. He he act like he ain't you in know the mess. What's but he's baby? He, come on. Uh, unfortunately, what's happening is he's interviewing people. Shay Shay, who have been involved with people. Shay, who have been hurt. Shay, Shay. My mother used to tell me, hurt people hurt people. Shay, Shay. Oprah, been hurt. Tyler Perry, been hurt. Medea. Look at their past history. Medea. I hear what you're saying. Now they got money, yeah. and they don't have no God. Shay, Shay. You can You can quote all the verses that you want to, but it's about your heart. Tyler Perry, Medea. he better stop it. Medea. 
okay? Because he's trying to split the fence. Listen to Jay Reynolds' song, No Gray. Okay? My grandson, 12 years old, told me, Grandma, you a goat. He said that you, hold on, he he told you that you are old. He he called you a goat? Well, wait, I got upset because you know I'm 62. I ain't know what a goat was. He said, Grandma, he said, that's greatest of all time, Grandma. He was being slick. I'm blessed. And I got a, I got, I got history behind me. I'm 13 years breast cancer free. I was a RN for 17 years and got hit by two trucks in Philadelphia. So I had no choice but to grow with the new generation. Damn! And thank them. Damn! You got, you got what? Mm-hmm. Damn! At the oh, same yeah. time. And look what I don't look like what I've been through. Oh man, you you you. So I'm just looking at oh my, my people God, on TV, man. and I'm seeing. I got the chance to meet Monique. I have a picture with her in in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, at the Funny Bone when mm-hmm. all of this started back in 2019, and the guard was hawking me. So I hawked him because I didn't want him. I wanted Monique, and he told me come on over there to him, and he's trying to talk to me and kick it with me. But when Monique came over. He said, who is this young lady? He said, she want to speak to you. And I told her, I'm following you. I'm with you. Don't give up. I asked her, could I pray for her? And the tears start rolling down her face. She said, you know what, baby? Nobody has ever wanted to pray for me. Mm. He said, go ahead, pray for me. And Mm. I prayed for her. Now that's deep. That's deep right there, man. Yeah, you prayed for Monique in front and she cried right there in front of you. Right there. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And that was before she lost all her weight and everything. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. And I'm so proud of Taraji and all the sisters that are standing up against all these old crazy gatekeepers. That's what my mother used to call the devil's imps. What what did you pray like? What was your prayer for Monique? You ain't got to tell us exactly, but what what's some of the things that you prayed for Monique about? One of the biggest thing I prayed for her about was I asked God to cover her family from the crown of their head to the mm. soles of their feet to put a hedge around them and keep them safe from all harm, hurt, and danger. Mm. Her family. That was it. Ooh, that that ain't that you. Don't bless her whole lineage, man. Don't broke that the curse on her. Don't you lifted the it's curse. There's a whole bunch of us out here that's good. We've been through a lot. Nobody knows our story, and they'll never know unless we tell it. Just like what's happening now. You don't lifted that woman curse, man. She don't started working out, eating right, and she she felt better with her she life. She's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. Cat gonna be fine. Shay Shay gonna be fine. They all gonna be fine. They all and gonna make it. In the name of Jesus, they gonna be fine. They survivors. They survivors. They can't afford for nobody to go missing right now. And you know, like as the DD stays on the corner, the streets is hot. So how you feel? Like we just said, both of these brothers are survivors. So how do you feel about Mike Epps and Shay Shay having a little dust up, a little kick up? You zesty. They'll, they'll you get it together. They'll get it together. They'll get it together. Listen to me, baby. I don't go by the Bible, but I believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Ten Commandments is common sense. Mm-hmm. If you got a good heart and the industry puts you somewhere where you don't want to be, all you got to do is continue to believe in God and it's going to come to pass. It's going to be okay with them. It's going to be okay. You know, I loved Steve Harvey for a long, long time. But Steve, Steve got a lot that he needs to repent for. Oh, come on. Now, don't do that to Steve Harvey. Mm -mm. Because Mike Epps, Mike Epps, he's like the goofy cousin in the family or whatever. No, so he going that shay shay. But you hate, you, how you going to pray for Monique and Dan? Listen to me, baby. I love Steve. Don't, doesn't the Bible say beware of false prophets? Who said he was a prophet, Steve. though? Steve what ain't no preacher. What goes on in the dark will finally come to light. Steve got some things that he, he needs to make amends with. Oh, oh sister, you're right. You're right. Steve There's was some on some gospel with them books. And let me say this while Damn, I'm books. talking to you. I appreciate you answering my call. 
Well, let's 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 switch this real quick. Lori Harvey. Shit. Lori Harvey, I've been following her, right? Shit. This poor child got a, a bad track record. I'm a mother of three boys that have been all three born seven years apart. So none of them had nothing in common until now. My oldest is 46. So I've been following Lori. Lori done been through the NFL, the NBA, Roddy Roddy, everybody. Now she gets a chance. To be a whole woman with Michael B. Jordan. She, Whoever she not with him no more. Man, she would. I know. Dude. Listen to me, baby. Listen to me. Oh my God. Whoever raised this young man, they did a damn good job. God forgive me for cussing. They did a damn good job. He had a chance to get that name back. That lady, that woman, that respect. He didn't break up with her. She broke up with him. Why would Steve, as a father, mm. he had no comment, mm. but it leaves the mind to wonder, Damn. and it didn't take her long to go on to the next. Damn. And she, she keep she on going. She don't stop. Heart. She ain't going to stop. And Steve loved that young man. He bragged on him about the skis he brought and, and the golf. Hold on. Wait a minute. You ain't about to force me to do no girly gossiping and spilling tea. Hold up. Wait a minute. I'm over here sitting on your lap and all that like you my grandmoms or what. Now, nah, I'm running the show. You don't I'm went, for, you don't went all been, in the show. No, been, no, been no, been no, at. no. I respect you and all that, but I'm about to get off your lap and continue with my show. I dare you, Debo Grandma Bully. That ain't what we do <laughs> around here, man. We, we gonna pray for everybody in the industry. How about that, baby? Matter of fact, I need you to say a prayer for um, Shay Shay, because he getting it real bad right now out but there he, in the media. But that's the devil, because the devil sees what's getting ready to come to Shay Shay. Nothing but gold and honor. That's his job, baby. So you ain't gonna say the prayer and all that? What, what what prayer? He's already been blessed. But I will say a prayer if you want me to. Well, pray for me then. Since you don't want to pray for Mike Epps, say a beautiful, prosperous prayer for me, man. i tell you what. I'll say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, I want to thank you for allowing us to see another day. I want to thank you, Father God, for allowing this young man to answer the phone so that we could talk. I want to ask that you bless everyone in his team, including Shay Shay. Even though I know, Father God, that you've already done what you're supposed to do, it's up to them to believe. Shay Shay is right where you need him to be, and we want to thank Hold you. Hold on, is the prayer for me or Shay Shay? You got the what Lord. Did I just say? I'm confused, I, I or the Lord confused, because some may like right. I do apologize, but what I Shay Shay got team. to do Are you with part of the team? Me? Aren't you part of his team? How? I don't know. His, so I don't got his phone number. Uh, no, but you're, you're, you, you answered the phone in behalf of him, right? You know what? I never even thought about it like Come that. Come on, man. You just interrupt you wise. Lord to you give wise him up. in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to be all right, too, but it ain't your time just yet. The, hold on. So you a prophetess as well? No, I'm just doing what God say do. Praise his name. You are a great vessel. I love you. I love you too, sister. And that's why Thank I don't you want you to be no stranger. Oh, man. Yo, the next time you call, I'm going to pick it up faster than I picked it up this time. So, you Look, know. So I tell you what you do. Give me give me two tickets to that Cat Williams show yeah, in Richmond. Yeah, I got you, sister. We're going to figure that out when I get my food stamps and all that. And I'm going to holler at you, you real soon. I love you to death, <laughs> Ma. You keep it real. We going to holler. No you. doubt. I love you too, Ma. Real talk. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Oh, I forgot. This your boy, Ellis. Yo, what it do, Ellis? How you feeling, man? I'm good. What, I, I keep hearing Reg about to get his own show. When that supposed to happen? Man, y'all y'all call up here all on this man, ball balls and all that. Why y'all do that? Y'all be looking for another man and all that. You already watching the video about Shay Shay, so I'm feeling a little suspect about you. And then you call up asking about another man. That's all. Uh, you have a good night. Just when Reg is going to get his own no, show. No, that's it, though. Okay, Shay Shay. Okay, Shay Shay, and thank hey. you so much for your. Did he say it? What the fuck? <laughs> Just tooty, footy, woody, tooty, right. do, 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 do
Yo, hello, and thank him so much for his phone call. But damn, this dude said, hey. You a grown ass man. Yo, hello, hello, who this is, man? Right, what up? I ain't no King Green Beans. Uh. Yo, the, yo, shout out to King Greens, man. And the lady that just called in, she was speaking about Lori Harvey. And if you really want to go down the line, she been living kind of foul. By the looks yeah. of it, because she been with, she just flip, they flipping her like a pancake. Like she's what almost done. Uh, she's almost high value, done. High value escort. Whatever it is. I don't, how can she have fun being with all these? That can't be no fun. He look like he going to get mad and probably try to put hands on her. On some um stuck in his role type of shit. I don't know. Grandma had us sipping on that that old that old green. That was tea. that good, man. That that was some good honey iced tea she was spilling. I ain't gonna lie. I was enjoying her conversation, man. She she a woman. She she grown. She smart. You gotta appreciate that. How you gonna hate on somebody? Pray though. <laughs> Yo, man, she talking about. I said pray for me. She what Shay? She praying for Shay Shay and all that. Like what? What that's gonna do for me? I'm standing there waiting for her to put yeah, the food hey, on I my plate. My, she, bowed, my eyes closed. She's scooping she all the food. I open my eyes. I'm hungry as hell. She's scooping all the food, putting it on Shay Shay plate. Like I ain't over here starving. Oh my goodness. Like he ain't got enough on his plate. Like he ain't doing good already. I'm a, I don't know how many people watching. She's scooping all of, all the prayers for him and all that. It's crazy. But what I wanted to say is, people be like, they be making this like race issue, like oh, they uh, cause they black and blah blah blah. But people get on the white people too. People always get on Vlad, Adam Twenty Two, and all these white people that be doing the same uh, chatty patty stuff. You know what it is? Mike Epps, that little retarded cousin from Indiana, that's always, since we the black family, and we all family, we all people of color, we all family, Mike Epps is that, that ignorant ass cousin in your family that's gonna say something funny about the other cousin just to make us <laughs> laugh. Like, right. like if you graduate, it. you don't graduated, this nigga got something slick to say at the graduation about your cap. Being too small for you, <laughs> too small for your big ass head. Oh but I don't see why Shannon got mad at that. I mean, he a comedian. If he do a joke on stage, that's what he get paid to do. He, of course, he gonna talk about what's hot. That's the hot topic. Yo, Mike been throwing mud for the longest though. He started off with a fake Fendi jacket. Oh my goodness. He up there with a fake Fendi. Look at him, Cat Williams. He did a whole mm -hmm. interview with a fake Fendi on. This dude was funny though. He just, he ain't gonna stop. He gonna keep on cracking jokes and now Shannon mad. But Mike a class clown. What he do? A class clown, man. That's that's what he is. And, and Shay Shay got offended. So how many people you know fight the class clown? Like you just let him do what he do. Hey man, you gotta enjoy Mike Epps though, man. He, he that sigh of relief because he gonna say some shit that we all wanna say. People been wanting to say that. About um, and with Shannon, yeah. with Shannon, forget is uh Mike Epps. You know he cool with uh Snoop Dogg and all them Crips and all this. Yeah, man, Mike Epps he cool with a lot of um, but you know they ain't right. trying to pull a who ride on Shay Shay. You make it seem like they gonna do a drive by like on <laughs> Minister Society. No, that's what they that's what they acting like they gonna do to him. So you Shay know, Shay uh, he coming Christmas. out. He coming out the Louis Vuitton store with all these bags. Niggas rolled up in the van like that. There go that nigga that's hard. Like they on Friday or some shit. Ain't nobody about to spray up Shay. Spray, nah, spray, that Shay, was Shay. Zesty. That was kind of zesty how uh, Ocho just hopped in to fight like that. Like, and I'm going to hit him too. Like, or whatever he said. Shit, they boys, they dogs, they football players. Like, hey, if you run in that direction, I'm running that direction too, man. Just thinking like some dogs. You know, if I know my 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 dog can beat up this little dude, I got a dog that's six two or whatever the case, and he can beat this little dude up. Why would I hop in? I'm gonna be like, dude, I probably Shit. tell him not to fight him. You that puppy, you that mad puppy on the side growling. <laughs> You don't like what you see in this shit. You trying to get a little piece of the action too, cause you bought it yeah. like that. I ain't gonna do that. 
<laughs> hey, hey, there's some people out there that really move like that. You got to watch out. Some wolves, they be in packs. Like, oh, yeah, I already know. It's crazy, yo. You got to be careful who you come across because people, it be some thug ass nigga working at the Apple store. He doing, he got the tattoos on his hands, on his arms, but he knows <laughs> his tech. But he don't put in some dirt in the streets and he's still living the projects. Actually, I caught the bus out here and I'm trying to do right. But if I go back, my probation officer, she think I'm sexy. So she giving me a break. But don't think that I won't return back to the cage. Cause I was a, Yo, people know how yeah, to put on the act. You cannot judge a book by its cover, man. And just because a person is smart don't mean that they weak, man. Yeah, and they... uh. People trying to act like Shannon dumb or something. He ain't, I wouldn't say he just being super messy, but he know what he doing. Like he putting the play together. Yeah. For that money, for that green, for that retirement, for them kids, for the, for them houses, for them cars, for them women's. And, and they forget that uh, Skip's still on his team. So, you know, him and Skip some conglomerate talking about what, you know, what to do. It ain't like him and Skip not cool. They, they working together. Okay. You fantasizing, bro. Nah, that's true. Come on, man. Skip on that show, don't it? Or uh, he got something to do with it. See, you so. be listening to that Docs Daily and then try to take what I be saying <laughs> and throw it back at me and you all tripped up and slipped <laughs> up, man. That's what you no. do. That's what you call in to do, man. You call in to regurgitate what I said and what I be I be playing no. half of the time and you be taking it seriously. You be no, telling on yourself, I'm, man. <sighs> I'm saying because... Oh, oh my goodness. I'm saying because you know how like they say okay, oh like like now he want to fight Mike Epps, the black comedian, but Mike Epps he want to fight none of them people on Saturday Night Live. Who you got on your playlist? Him. And no disrespect, bro. I know you got Lil Uzi Vert on the playlist. You probably got um. I rock with Lil Uzi. All all that shit. You got Drake on but the I'm playlist. I, I listen to everybody. I listen to from old to new. Yeah, man. Yo, you know. It's an age gap or whatever, my young brother. And I understand you got them dread swinging and all that. And you listening to, <laughs> and I appreciate you listening to the show. You probably got the chop over there and everything. You just, uh, how old are you, man? I, I need to know this, man. How old are you, brother? Two nine. Twenty nine. King Greens. Twenty nine. Oh, you I got two, some age on me. Hold on. You about to have a dirty thirty and all that? Dirty 30, April, bitch. A dirt? I thought you was about to go to your prom. Ooh, fuck, I'm I, a grown man out there, man. Can't, man, is it the music? Because y'all be listening to them young boys, man. That's why I don't listen to them little, I would, the last thing I want to do is be thinking like them little dicks, man. Oh my goodness. Nah, I think my generation is like, like how J. Cole said, we in the middle. I'm in the, like, I'm in the, I can relate to the old people and the young people. You right there in the middle. How do that feel being in the middle of this, the, the generation that just passed? Do you like it? You proud of it? Like, how you feel about your generation and where it's headed? Oh, my generation? Yeah. Uh, Damn, that's a good question. Uh, I think my generation is cool because it's like we in the age of information. So I think my generation is, is doing a lot with the information, you know. Ready to be tech savvy. So it's like, all right, this information, it's kind of been out there. It probably weren't broadcasted as it is, but like the generation above us, they didn't really try to learn nothing. It's like they just was like, just went with whatever was, you know what I'm saying? They didn't try to step outside the box. And I feel like my generation kind of sparked that a little, like more. You know, of course, you had Malcolm X and all of that. But for the most part, people was just go to work, go home in their lane. But now everybody want to be their own boss, get on YouTube, do this, start business, well, and sell shirts. Man, the difference is y'all generation is based off of entertainers and entertainers alone, man. Like entertainment and not just with black entertainers, but just entertainment period been entertained mm -hmm. by the uh, technology for so long. Generations before wasn't entertained by the technology. They used to play with marbles, uh, right. play ball. They, is that a bad thing? No, actually it's a horrible thing because 
y'all trained like the computers. Y'all not trained like people. They train you like nah, a computer I think, I think is trained. I think you speaking on the generation under me. Like I say, we in the middle, so we kind of got both. I got, I got the internet and the outside. So you know what it's like to not, you was around when cell phones wasn't popular? Right, yeah, I was around, you know, had the snake game on the little Nokia. Like I was around for all of that. You was around for them, um, for the nineties and everything? Yeah. Well, I'm born in 94, so I, you know, I caught the end of it. Born in 94? I know I feel old as hell. You was born in a gangster <laughs> rap era. Right. So I came right when it was everything was bubbling. Damn, you came when the um after NWA and Nas and them was gearing up and Tupac and Biggie and them was gearing up to get shot. Oh my god. They had they got shot by the time I made it. Damn, you came when the shit got ugly when hip hop turned into street business <laughs> and, and entertainers became gangsters and it was just ugly right. out here to that's true. It's all Hollywood bullshit, and people still think this shit is serious, man. People don't act the way they act because that's the way they act. They act the way they act because of the shit they see on TV, man. I mean, it's always been like that though. Cause even even Malcolm X, they was on TV, and people was acting like Brother Malcolm out there in them exactly. Harlem streets. So it's just all about what they promote, what is cool. Back then, I guess they wanted that to be cool, the Afro era and Black Panther, and then they. But it was it was it was a beautiful thing to see people of color sticking together, bro. Oh man, it's made my just to see them brothers standing together like that. It was nah. A, I mean, it it was, but I think it was a plot. It's like just like all right. You got the, the GDs, the growth development, Christian blood, it all started good. But I think the government knew, like, we going to twist all of this in the future. But people fail to realize all them gangs you talking, they was a part of the fall of the nation of Islam. A lot of times in Chicago, you know, that's the headquarters for the nation. And brothers, they started taking on different, you know, they but took that the knowledge and turned it into something else. Like Malcolm had right. students that was like his disciples and they took the science to a whole nother level and that's where you get the five percenters out there in new york due to uh clarence x 13 who was an apostle of malcolm x his his mind the way he saw it his analogy of it was so so intelligent and intriguing that people still live by these key factors and values that deal with elements and shit there's some deep shit there's some brothers out there that's so deep they can cause you know, black people to clean snap out of the bullshit, man. And they don't want that. Nah. I mean, you really, they really can't because black people only really listen to people that's famous. So if, if dude ain't real famous, they pay them off. Down. They pay them off to speak, whatever they talking, they getting paid to do it. Especially if the platform ain't theirs, there's laws, there's rules, there's stipulations. You just can't get out there and say what you want to say. You got to find your lane and you got to stick with that. Yeah. That's it. Real talk. But I just feel like everything, King Greens. Was, everything is crooked. Everything was like how it started off good, even the nation of Islam. It's, the nation of Islam is on some gang shit nowadays. They taking over the jails and all this and that. It's all about survival, brother. Men gonna figure out the best way to survive. And if, if brothers in survival mode and they really want to survive and do right and be humble and have peace in their spirit instead of living like an animal in a cage, then hell, have some civilization about yourself, brother, and keep your head up high. That's that's how I feel about it. And, and men be needing that, especially when they in a situation like that. Like these brothers, they got to find a source that they can identify with. They can't be out here not respecting but themselves. I they, hear what you're saying, but that, that's still on some gang shit. Because if you just trying to help a brother, I shouldn't have to, if I go to jail, I shouldn't have to convert to Islam for you to be on my side. Survival. Brother. It's about survival in numbers, man. That's what it's about. Nah, you gotta get for me to get protection. You telling me I gotta change my religion? You ain't been there, bro. You don't want to go there, neither. So leave that one alone, brother. Because hey, them men they be righteous. 
and honorable a lot of times. They they keep their head up and they they soldiers. I respect them. I give them all that, but I feel like that's that's just different. I gotta I gotta turn on my God to get some protection from you. Like that's, hey that's man, that, that's all on how you feel about it. You know, shout out to the brothers in the nation of Islam. Wherever oh, they may be, them. wherever, whatever they may do with their lives, you know, shout out to spiritual people, period. You know, and, and we appreciate you, bro. And don't be no stranger, King Greens. We gonna holler at you later. No I doubt, bro. You be good, bro. You be good. Make sure you be all right. No doubt. You're gonna be good. We talking talking about Shannon Sharp. He talking about the nation of Islam and all that shit. Shannon looked like he could be a part of the nation. Oh my goodness. Shit, he probably, I don't know. Mike Epps, he could pass for one of the um Elijah Muhammad kids, maybe. Cousins, shit, Bob Marley, great, great grandson, <laughs> man. <laughs> the peanut man. Shit, Shannon Sharp, Eddie Murphy, fifth cousin. That's the only way he got that scholarship because Uncle Eddie saw he had talent. Who knows, man? Hollywood is a small circle, man. And everybody ain't going to make it. Y'all got to look at y'all treat these celebrities like they angels and archangels. Y'all be worshiping these celebrities like they got wings. Like Steve Harvey is a man beautiful and full of grace. But I doubt that his will is the same will of the Lord. Like, how can you say that about Steve? Steve is a glorious angel. Y'all be talking about, y'all love to romanticize about these famous people. It's like the um, Greeks and Romans. Y'all be all over the place with this shit. Like Achilles is my favorite Caesar, but Caesar Zeus was much greater than he. How dare you speak of Caesar's house? I know I've seen Caesar's house with another woman. You've never seen Caesar's house with another woman. Oh my goodness. Y'all bickering like the people of old in modern times, man. Like, stop worshiping these people. Shay Shay gonna be all right. He just a man like the rest of us. Oh Stop worshiping me. Look, I love Cat Williams too. Cat Williams is my favorite. The little dude with the perm on the last for the last Friday bootleg, <laughs> the bootleg DVD. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you looked at the <laughs> you looked at the cover like what the fuck? I guess Christmas is Friday. They got a reindeer and shit on it. Like what is this, man? Ice Cube a fool for even putting that shit together, man. Hold on, man. It was so janky. <laughs> it's like he wanted it to be trash. Like, yo, let's just throw the grease on it. The film, <laughs> the film look all greasy. And they, they had Mike Epps looking stupid with the tight ass, a tight little pimp suit with a perm. He looked, man, he looked extra zesty. Look at this shit, yeah. Oh my he looked. They had it. It was two D. They was all on this man. Titty to titty, he squeezed both of them like, uh, fresh out of jail. He kept gripping his sausage in front of them niggas, man. He squeezed on Craig Booty. He tried to <laughs> tried to grab on Day Day nuts. Oh man, Damon. Fresh out of jail, listening to Tupac. How do you want it? Whole movie bootleg, man. They selling bros barbecue. Got more sauce than they get your meat. Fuck. Oh my goodness. Give you a plate full of sauce. <laughs> Put a biscuit on it, some old ass tartar sauce, and give you some fries. And on um, Mike Epps, he was frontlining it. Yo, that's probably what the beef about. He like, I remember when I was frontlining movies. And now you the frontliner. Like, yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? 
What's up, man? This is Tevin, man. Tevin Goldson. What's up? What it do, bro? How you feeling? Man, I'm doing great, man. Just enjoying this day and stuff. How's uh, everybody else going on this day? Shannon Sharp and Mike Epps had a dust up and they talking like they want to see each other at the all-star game. And when I pull, when I pull up, when I pull up, when I hop out and I see you, Mike, I'm going to get at you. That's right. how they talking. Mike talking. Oh, oh, you don't want that smoke. Um, you come to Gary, you know, ain't nothing but them wolves. They, they going to ride for me. Mike getting his Tupac on for the first time in his life. Like, come get it, sucker. It's his turf, man. Ain't no telling how Mike got it set up in Gary. He be riding around them old school cars. He pull up at your grandmama house. How you doing, Miss Ann? Next thing you know, Mike, he coming out. He he living like the first Friday. <clears throat> it's his neighborhood. He don't bought the block. They lo- ain't nothing. He the man in Gary, Indiana, man. Hollywood bunny. Yeah, that's crazy. From Hollywood to the hood. From the hood to Hollywood yeah. to Hollywood to the hood. Right. And it's just crazy that, you know, that, you know, in society, it's like this where everyone wants to go off of what celebrities are saying and stuff like that. Like, you know, everybody's human in the day. And eventually that shit's going to happen. That shit happens to anybody. Yeah, man. You know, these brothers... They be entertainers living a good life and they still want the people to think that they still human and all that. Like, look, I had beefs. I do stuff. Like, look at me. I'm in the news now. Nah, 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 boo, boo. Knowing damn right. well they don't want right. no well, smoke. Right, right, well, right. They, well, yeah, but they don't want to be seen as normal, normal, regular people. You're right. They want to keep the culture. Th- they want to uh, throw mud for the culture. Like, oh, shit, look at me. I threw a punch. Y'all see that? I threw two punches. <laughs> like, oh, did you see? I, I hit him back, though. Yeah, he hit me with a jab, but I hit him with two more punches. So what, what, what now? Right. Putting on the show for everybody. It's entertainment, yeah, baby. Crazy. And they doing it. They not doing it with class. Like, they, they doing it in a messy fashion that got us all looking like Shay Shay. Yeah, you're definitely right. Why these brothers behave? We want to see, be proud of these brothers and see them behaving like men. Like when they do interviews, they should say there's some things that I will not discuss about my brother so and so, but he knows how I feel, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. People will respect. It would be right. a genuine masculine convo. It got to be a dude with a big beard to have these conversations with these men. It ain't like that. You yeah, got a dude right. named Shay Shay on the couch and he waiting on you and all that. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you had a big ass smile, he be ready to uh that's he be crazy, giddy. Really. He be giddy like come and get it. Give me the tea. Yeah. Come on, baby. <laughs> hey, tell me what you wanna You're tell right. me. Club Shay Shay. Hey, hey. He pull you a a, a tall glass of Shay. You gonna drink that? Yeah, I do. You gonna drink the Shay? A lot of them can be for other reasons, though, too. Pour you a tall glass of Shay and see what you gonna say off that Shay. Oh my God! They need yeah, to do a commercial, a commercial with Sugar Free to promote his damn sick, his liquor and all that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect, man. They get sugar free to do the um the Shea commercial. You know, I'm sipping on that Shea every day with the perm, with the skin, with the, with the skinny mustache. That would be perfect. Sugar free sipping on that Shea every day. You hear what I say? Drunk as a fuck. Oh, excuse my language, but that would be perfect, man. Right. Yeah, this should be crazy, man. I'll be up on here. I'll be checking your podcast every chance, every time you get on the live. No doubt. Yo, so I'm, sh- like I'm locked in. No doubt. I appreciate that, bro. Yo, what if Sugar Free it's turned true. him down? Like, no, I ain't doing that bitch that shit. I ain't fooling with no Shay. I ain't sipping yeah. on no Shay. What if Sugar Free yeah. wanted to <laughs> Yeah, it's almost I, like I he's like the, the money. next black TV or something. I ain't never gossip in front of another man. No, I'm not sipping that shit, bitch. He get turned down by a real mm-hmm. pimp. Yeah, man. He like baby. He can't make this shit up. 
He married God damn. Who he he married Blueface um baby mama mama. The fuck? Oh my god. Oh wow. It's crazy, man. Yo, shout out to Sugar Free and all that, man. Yo, man. Let's get back to this news. Yo, shout out, shout out to the Bay Area. Cause I'm gonna be coming out there one day and I don't want no smoke with my people in the Bay. For sure. You know? I'm all the way out here in Ohio. All the way in Ohio. Shout man. Out to everybody in. Thank you, man. Shout out. I'm gonna definitely keep it keep it locked in on here. I'll call back. Yo, ain't next that time, cat next time you get up and over here. Ain't that cat Williams territory out there in Ohio? Yeah, something like that, or he's from here, him and Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Yo, so you know, a lot of people that be from where they from at, you know, they they act like they're not even from where they from. Damn, what what you think attract people to Ohio like that? To have a person like Dave Chappelle, he can live anywhere in the world, but somehow, some way he ended up in Ohio of all places. Why would Dave Chappelle want to do like something? To live or to be or something? You're saying to live or or, or, or he from there? No, nah, to live there. Why, why would he want to live there? Oh, you want to know why? Yeah. <laughs> because they lifestyle, once they start seeing, like, when you get past them first two couple doors and seeing what's really going on there in society and it's, in the world, when you really start seeing things, you know, they they they, they get disgusted. They don't want to live that type of lifestyle. Can't go to certain stores you want to go to. Can't go to regular do regular things. You know, a lot of people ain't comfortable living out in LA and uh, Florida and all those uh, prime time states and stuff because they ain't really on that type of stuff that they are. So they, they live in a regular state where they could just live normal and be watching the news and watching the internet, seeing what's really going on without having to be in the mix. Without having to be in the mix. Yeah, like meeting when they go out to go shopping, they got the cameras on them. People want to ask them questions. You know, a lot of these interviews I be seeing on YouTube and stuff be looking set up. It look like someone contacted them, they accepted it, they got all propped up, dressed. And I feel like half the questions that they be asking them is already propped up. Like, it's just it just seems too uh, too staged nowadays with all these interviews. So. And they're not about to do one on the blast on the spot in real life. You know what I'm saying? You see them in the grocery store, you, you ask them some real life shit. You know what I mean? Like, that'll catch them off guard. Yo, man, Shannon Shaw making a whole lot of money right now. His pocket's looking chunky. Them views, they through yeah. the roof. Like, I hope they not tricking him out of his cut because he linked in with like, four companies it looked like to me he got Stephen a smith on one side so he getting all these different checks but is they giving him his proper cut like is he getting paid like a boss or is they like pocketing the money to oh shit is they prepping him and pampering him and giving him perks instead of actually right. giving him his real dividends for what he got going on right now i think he'll accept anything for real for real and then i think that he was chosen and pick to do some because he doesn't really fit the spot the part of being someone sitting and interviewing people for real for real it doesn't rub off to me right and then how he's always smiling man and he's lovable shit like that. That, that's all he gotta do yeah. that's all shannon do he's a lovable kind of guy man and that's why you really can't go in on him like that because people know for a fact you gonna love Shannon Sharp. You love them all undisputed. People um, love right. him on first take. People love Club Shay right. Shay. And it all boils right. down to the fact that he's a lovable guy. Like, why wouldn't you have love for Shannon? Right. Exactly. What, what What's exactly. personal? What is something personal that you would have against this man? Well, you gotta understand too, though. When he was on all the, all the other stuff for the sports commentator and stuff, he built up this team where everyone kind of takes his opinion and stuff as weight, as like as it means something. So now that he's an interviewer, you know what I mean? Like he can really be saying stuff to the person he's interviewing and stuff like that, and people are gonna listen because they're used to how he communicates with uh, commentating on sports. Yo, that's real, man. Cause, yeah, um, it's true. That's why I said he was chosen. That's why I'm saying he was picked. That's why I'm saying people, they pick people for a reason. They're like, okay, well, everyone's already used to how he communicates on sport commentating, so we'll just go ahead and use him as an interviewer, you know, and a personnel, you know, what I'm saying, and now everyone's gonna be ramped into that realm, 
And now all the celebrities, they're not gonna have no Hold issue on, with bro. doing hey, it. Hey, like, hey, oh, don't, oh. don't, don't mess up what you got going on, cause it sounds like you in the whole laboratory over there. It's going in and out. Like it sounds crazy over there, man. All we could do is pray for you at this point, brother. And don't be no stranger. Make sure you call back the next time we go live, man. You be safe over there. Don't get electrocuted or nothing. All right, I'll ask you later. Stick in the whole lab. He got the plastic boots on with the cell phone to his ear. Dealing with toxic waste and what the fuck? In the facility somewhere. Like what was he what was he on? I think it was bugging. He's like I got the thermometer with the decapitator. I mix it with the elevator and the sulfate, sulfate fiction. I put it with the dibble, little dibble dabble of the, the girl apple sauce, put it in the incubator, mix it like this, and it makes ketchup. Oh my goodness. Yep, gotta put it in the incubator. Only way we sell it to the pub, baby. In the lab. But that's Negro here nor there, man. But on the real, your boy Shannon Sharp, he all right with me, man. Mike Epps, my favorite comedian, man. Mike Epps got to be the GOAT in my book because you know for a fact that Mike Epps is just being himself, man. He's being himself and he's comfortable with it. So it's not, it ain't work for him. He's a natural comedian, man. And you, that's something you rarely see. Got quick timing all day, every day. He live comedy, man. As far as I see it, that's why I appreciate Mike Epps, man. He got a philosophy about him. They need to put him on a book with Russell Simmons, man. Oh, my goodness. Or sitting like Russell Simmons. The art of Mike. Hey, man, it's the art of Mike. Sometimes you just got to be a player, you know, take care of your family, man, you know, chase the hoes. But that's Negro here no there. I'm a fan of Mike Epps. I'm a fan of Shannon Sharp. Even though I ain't been able to really get with the Shay Shay stuff. Last year I was all with it. But um this year, I ain't really feeling it, man. Last year was all about love. This year, it's looking like it's all about hate. Hopefully, he don't do no more messy interviews for a while like get some people up there bring up dj premier oh that'd be a good shay shay talk about <laughs> talk about the keyboards the drums <laughs> shay shay would probably walk the hell i had enough of this i don't know nothing about no keyboards no drum machines i'm a football player talk about oh you hit the you press this button right there and they do what now Oh, you do that? I don't know nothing about that New York hip hop shit. Oh, country boy, I don't listen to that shit. You, yo, you can't get him with no New York legends. They going nah, I mean him to death. Have he ever sat with a bona fide New Yorker? That's something I've yet to see, man. He has never sat. Who from New York? Shannon ever sat and talked to. He ain't never even sat with Mary J. Blige. She has son his ass under the table and he know it. Like, yo, hurry up, Shannon. Take off your shoes, man. Take off your shoes. Oh my Got some nice shoes. I like those money. I get those and get those. Let me get your shoes and all that. You walk on barefoot. Ain't nothing. Don't you got a limo? Like, let me get your shoes. Like, come on. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. You be like, ho, ho. He hop out his shoes. And give him the mirror and give, give me your chain. Give me your chain too. Chain, uh, the, your chain is chunky. You out here shining, daddy. You shining all over Mary. Grab his hand, put it on her butt. And give me your chain. Kiss him on the cheek. Oh, no problem, Mary. It ain't nothing but jewelry. It ain't nothing but jewelry, baby. It ain't nothing but jewelry. It ain't nothing but jewelry. Ain't nothing but jewelry, baby. Mary J. Blige has him tricking on the first date. Yo, no disrespect to Mary J. Blige. I love her style. She a beautiful woman. But I think she done been through enough to have a lot of class about herself, man. Mary, she done, you know, she got a past. We all do. 
But I think at this point in Mary's life, she just, you know, she all about her class. Well, when she was with Michael Jordan that day, with his billionaire ball ass. Oh my goodness. Put on y'all. And pause, pause, pause all of that. Pause after that. But well, he is a big billionaire baller. And he was all up on her butt. They need to make a tape. Because I will buy that. The Michael Jordan, Mary J. They oh, I love you, baby. <laughs> oh, Mary. Like, oh, you bought me some donuts, some cookies and milk. Oh, you're nasty. He living like R. Kelly with Mary J. How in the fuck this get on the screen? What the fuck? Wait, who typed that in? Oh, my goodness. Mary J. Blige. Not Michael Jackson. I said Michael Jordan. This shit creepy, man. Get that shit off the screen. Man. Oh my goodness. Ooh, apologize. Man, got me looking at it. I'm scared. It's late. I'm scared. Hold on. Is they trying to say that Mary J. Blige is Michael Jackson? Oh my goodness. Yo, this shit be getting deep when you be looking at the internet. Because if Mike wanted to be black, they said he had many of disguises. And seeing that um, Janet Jackson is with Mary and Beyonce, they all could be family. Second and third cousins and shit. Oh my goodness. Come to think about it, she do look like they mama. If she ain't had that blonde hair, she look like one of the Jacksons with the nose and with the lips. She looked like she could be Latoya Jackson's... <laughs> Latoya Jackson's cousin, man. Tell me she don't before they got the work done, though. I love Mary J. Blige. Get her off the screen. Yo. It's something that I'm interested in talking about, and I want to run it by y'all real fast. If y'all don't mind, because I've been thinking about topics that y'all may be interested in since y'all the audience and Y'all show me love and support, so I need y'all to put some input in the chat and let me know what y'all think, man. I'm talking to QS, Uncle Diggity. Don't think y'all got those memberships for no reason. I look at your comments and I like to see what y'all got to say because it's easy to point y'all out because y'all in the green. Now, I read everybody comments and show everybody love, but when I see that green, and not just because they members, but... A part of the membership is them having to say so and what goes on, what type of topics y'all input really matter. So when I be reading these comments, I'll be like, where is the input? man? Maybe y'all ain't know that, but I'm letting y'all know that now. Y'all could put some input on what suggestions, whatever it may be. You know, your voices be heard. If you a member of the channel, we family, y'all. I'm going to listen to my cousin or my auntie or somebody in my family before I listen to somebody else. And I ain't saying that you ain't in my family because you, why I'm all I'm saying, these people paid the price. Oh my goodness. Don't start preaching. Man, I'm a look, man. I ain't about to start preaching on nobody, but that old lady prayed for me. And ever since she did that, I've been feeling anointed. So I ain't going, but they paid the price. They man, look, this is a bomb. You know what I'm saying? Let's just get back into the video. Talking too much. Yeah, man, I'm talking too much. I'm running out of water. And I got to set up for another show. We doing something else tonight on Docs Daily. I've been AWOL for a minute. Now I'm back. And fell right back into some beef. And I just don't understand it. Why every time I get on here to conversate about what's going on with our beautiful black celebrities, brothers and sisters, man, it seemed like it's always some funk to report on. And I'll be looking for the positive stuff, but it really ain't no positive news out there that people care about. You see some positive shit, you scroll right past it and get to the to the beef. It's like. People don't want to eat their vegetables, but they want to eat all the bullshit, all the cookies, all the donuts, all the hams. Oh my 
Y'all want to eat all the cakes, ice creams, cheese pizza with the wings, and don't forget the ranch. Y'all want to eat the junk, the big fat potatoes, the wedges, and the curly fries. But don't want to touch no kale. Y'all don't want to eat no, no carrots. Y'all gag thinking about eating a, a boiled potato, man. Oh like it's not fried, it's boiled, Ugh, mom. You'll spit that shit out on the table. Like, are, are these French fries boiled? That mom, Ugh, okay. she boiled the potato. Ugh. You also spoil brats, but I love it, man. Spoil, 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 spoil brats, man. When it comes to this tech. Now, I get it. You needed to survive and all that, but damn, you got to find some type of closure every now and then. You know what I'm saying? People watch this channel to find closure, believe it or not. And um, and I appreciate y'all for listening. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Look, baby, bitch, move, move, move. Oh my bitch, goodness. Bitch. Hung up on me, man. Take a breather, man. I'm heated. Anyway, hold on. We got a new member to we got some new family and oh my god, shit. Oh, you just, don't look at your cousin like that. Oh god damn man. Why she gotta be family now? I can't even look at her like that. Oh what the K stand for? And no disrespect, mom. I'm just wondering. You don't join the channel and all that. She just became a member. She's showing me love. Oh my goodness. And she just so happened to look like Beyonce, man. Okay, let me just um okay, Reg, can you yo take that? I can't! Yo, Reg, take her picture down. I can't! Man, man, move out the way, man. I want to look at your picture and all that she she joined the channel forever she she gonna be here forever forever ever yo that's what i'm talking about right there baby yo welcome to the family lad yeah uh-huh yeah you yo you 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 family now you can do whatever you want to do around here it don't even matter you can spit you can, it don't matter you can leave trash you don't, you know it is what it is. Do what you want to do. It's your world. And hey, you a material girl and all that. Got your hair done, your nails done. Mm -hmm. All right, man. I want to thank y'all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate y'all. I hope y'all having a lovely night. Shout out to Lady K and all of the members, Uncle Diggity and all the people watching the video. I got so much love for y'all, man. Oh man, where the hell I put? Okay, there go my phone. Let me grab this real quick. Cause uh, I gotta let y'all know what's up. Yo, I gotta give a shout out to the people that hit that cash app, man. Yo, everybody that been showing me love, Raymond Alcantar. Thank you so much for that cash app, my brother. Derek Rochelle, living so well. What it do, man? Thank you so much. Why well, need a Pratha? Hit that cash app. Where you at, Juanita? So much love for you. Demetrius Bright. What it do, dawg? Thank you so much. And Big Cuz. Derek Rochelle. Humble Waters. Yo, that's what it is, man. Thank y'all so much. I'm talking about Thompson. Hit the cash app. Tammy. Mini Ripperton. Grace. A&E. Yo, I appreciate every last one of y'all. Yo, I'ma holla at y'all later.